Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to the June Ordinary Council meeting. I will now hand to Councillor Greg James to perform a welcome to country. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally and my fellow colleagues and, uh, and, uh, and today um, uh, for the, um, the members of the, the, the community as well. Firstly, I pay my respects to our ancestors. I acknowledge our elders, both past, present and emerging. I'd like to acknowledge the Yorta Yorta Nations and all its people um, whose land we meet on today. So on behalf of the Elders Council, the 16 family groups and the eight respective tribes who proudly share in the status of traditional owners of this land, I say a very warm welcome to this wonderful land, country and waterways. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor James. Item two, acknowledgement. We, Greater Shepparton City Council, acknowledge the Yorta Yorta peoples of the land, which now comprises Greater Shepparton. We pay our respect to their tribal elders. We celebrate their continuing culture and we acknowledge the memory of their ancestors. Item three, privacy notice. This public meeting is being streamed live via our Facebook page and made available for public access on our website, along with the official minutes of this meeting. All care is taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, it is assumed that your consent is given in the event that your image is broadcast to the public. It is also assumed that your con consent is given to the use and disclosure of any information that you share at the meeting, including personal or sensitive information, to any person who accesses those recordings or minutes. Item 4, Governance Principles. Council considers that the recommendations contained in this agenda give effect to the overarching governance principles stated in Section 9.2 of the Local Government Act 2020. These principles are as follows, and they are numbered one to nine within the agenda on page six. Item five, apologies, nil received. Item six, declarations of conflict of interest. Councillors, do we have any conflicts this afternoon? Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'll declare a conflict of interest on item 12.4 that deals with complementary parking. I have a general interest in it. Thank you, Councillor Dobson, do we have any other conflicts of interest this afternoon? Yes, Councillor Sally. Um, I have two. Two matters of a conflict of interest, um, the first being item 12.1 on page 40, which is the proposed lease of the council land uh, for the Manara Centre of Excellence. Um, and the second, and secondly, due to the last minute developments and short notice, unfortunately, and disappointingly, I disclose a conflict of interest on item 12.8 on page 105, which is the sale of land Nixon Maud Edwards under the affordable housing proposal. Thank you, Councillor James. We now move to item seven, which is confirmation of minutes of previous meeting. Is any items of the minutes opposed? No, councillors, there is a recommendation. Can I please have someone put that forward as a motion? I wasn't there. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. What are you moving? Does that mean to speak to it? Uh, I'd like to no, move no. Yeah, yeah. the recommendation to a motion uh, that the minutes of the 17th May 2022 Council meeting and 9th June 2022 additional Council meeting as circulated be confirmed. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Can I please have someone second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. All those in favour? Carried. We now move to agenda item eight, which is public question time, nil received. Councillors, we now go to page eight of the agenda, item 9.1, deputations and petitions. There is one there under 9.1, objection to the sale of 45 Parkside Drive, Shepherd and petition. There is a recommendation. Can I have a council put forward? I move that the council receive and note the petition titled Obje Objection to the Sale of 45 Parkside Drive, Shepherd and Petition in accordance with Governor's Rule 80. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I have someone second that motion? Happy to second, yeah. Councillor Summer. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to that motion? No, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to that motion? No, thank you. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Any councillor would like to speak to the motion? No, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Councillors, this now takes us to agenda item 10 under Community Director 10.1 Senior Festivals Grants 2022. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor put forward a motion? Thank you, Councillor James. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'd like to uh, move the recommendation 10.1 Senior Festivals Grant 2020 on page nine. I'll, I'll read out the recommendation, uh, Mayor Sally. Uh, the, the, the council note the successful applicants awarded funding under delegated authority for the 2022 Senior Festival Grants as follows. Organisation is the Lions Club of Talemba, um, incorporated. So there are two funding allotments to that, and it's uh, both at $500 each. To a total of one thousand dollars. 
Thank you, Councillor James. Would someone like to second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillor James, would you like to speak to that motion now? Thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, each year the council provides a single round uh, of senior festival grants as part of the Victorian Seniors Festival held in October every year. The grants are designated are designed to assist local community groups to run events that contribute economically, socially and culturally to our community and improve the livability of the Greater Shepparton more broadly. The Victorian Seniors Festival is now in its 40th year and is wonderful and is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the contribution made by our seniors to our community. Council offered a small grant uh, round to community groups and organisations uh, to assist in providing local senior events and activities throughout the month of October. It encourages participation of our elderly community. Um, the remaining grant funds will be used to provide additional programs and events at subsidised rates. Council Senior Fe uh, Festival Grant opened on the 10th of January 2022 and closed on the 28th of February 2022. The grant assessment panel uh, received a total of two applications for this round. The Victorian Seniors Festival originally commenced in 19. Uh, 82 and was known as Senior Citizens Week in 2002. The week was rebranded to Victorian Seniors, Fe Seniors Festival. The festival is targeted to all people aged 60 years and over, which in Greater Shepparton is 23% uh, of the population, and over 1,000 events occur statewide um, and many are planned locally. Greater Shepparton uh, City Council offers a small grant to community grant, uh, groups to assist in providing events and activities throughout the month of October. Um, so uh, Greater Shepherd and uh, City Council re received two applications only uh, for this year's 2022 Senior Festival Grants, and they have been awarded to the Lions Club of Talamba. Um, the two grants, uh, the plans is for, for a festive afternoon tea hampers, um, COVID uh, protected, of course, by staff, uh, council staff. And the second part of that is planning a session afternoon session with uh, seniors from Talamba, basically and social outings for getting um, getting around to see that the elders are safe. So um, that's basically the recommendation. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor James, Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Sure, just briefly, Councillor James covered it really well. Um, my only points would be to raise, um, I do wonder, it is. It does seem like quite a small take up of the grants, only having the two from Talamba, and I 100% commend them on their um, activities they're going to run. They sound fabulous, but I do wonder if opening the grants in January, February for a, a festival that takes place in October perhaps is just too far out to think about these things um, and get ourselves organised, um, especially for smaller community groups. So maybe that's just something we can reflect on and perhaps do better to encourage more participation uh, in the grants available. However, the way that this grant works is um, that a small uh, amount of money is funded by um, the hang on, funded by the Department of Families, Fairness and Housing, with a little bit chipped in from um, council. And essentially, all of that money goes towards celebrating the Seniors Festival, and it's available for all of the community groups to apply for if they have an idea. And if not, um, the rest of it goes into that festival anyway to support and uh, make it more affordable and accessible for community members. So. Either way, everybody wins with the Seniors Festival, and I think these two events will be amazing. Um, and I just encourage more people to take part in it. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? No, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Councillors, we now go to page 14 of the agenda item 10.2, which is Australian Early Development Census AEDC 2021 results. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor put forward a motion? Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. I would like to move the recommendation on page 14 as a motion, and it says that the council note the results of the Australian Early Development Census 2021 for Greater Shepparton. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Can I have a councillor second that? Councillor Brophy. I second that, Mayor. Sally. Thank you. Councillor Abdullah, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you. Um, so as we know that this AEDC data shows how well communities and families and schools are uh, supporting our children in their early years of development before they start school. And that assessment is done for five domains, uh, including physical health and well-being, emotional maturity, social competence, language and cognitive skills, 
and communication and general knowledge. Uh, this survey is done every three years to see children, how children are uh, tracking in terms of whether they are on track, whether they are developmentally um, at risk or developmentally um, vulnerable. So for the 2022 data, it shows that there has been a visible improvement in Greater Shepparton's uh, AEDC profile in all domains, which is really fabulous to see because um, uh, that really shows that there is a reduced level of vulnerability experienced by our children. And uh, as we know that the research shows that early childhood education saves money in long term. It is, the, it is a very cost effective strategy uh, to invest in early childhood. And research also shows that uh, children who receive quality early childhood care and preschool and play-based education, they have better outcomes in lives. So uh, given the fact that Greater Shepherd and City Council is a key player in this domain and in this space, uh, providing um, maternal and child health services, child um, health services, kinder and child care services, um, it is really a very important um, uh, development for us. And uh, hats off to uh, council for making important decisions around investing in early child, childhood and child care. Uh, for instance, we have recently seen the establishment of the integrated uh, Murutna Family and Children's Center, which is another support, where, um, another um, um, area where council has invested. It is also very encouraging to see that um, lately that early childhood development policy announcements have been made by the state government. Uh, free kinder for every child and 50 new low-cost low child care centers in the state. All of these developments are going to see impact on early childhood um, development. And um, in, in Greater Shepparton, the announcement around early parent parenting center uh, is also a very uh, positive uh, development. Uh, people had advocated, our community had advocated for it. Um, for a very long time. So it's very pleasing to see all these developments, which will basically mean that our children will get the best start in their lives. So really happy to see that development. Thank you, thank you Councillor Abdullah. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Sali. Um, what a highlight these results are. The quadrant levels of uh, the developmentally vulnerable percentages are down and some significantly, particularly around say communication and general knowledge, which was of five and a half percent uh, to the good. So that is really good. And the on track, um, the quadrants in regards to that have improved significantly too. Now, admittedly, the census was taken from 2018 to 2021. However, it has been over um, a, a decade of decline. So the it's certainly an upward trend. And I look forward to the 2024, where hopefully these figures will be presented today, will continue to improve um, and that we are in a position, but with better educational outcomes for our little people um, but, and that, that we are in a stronger position potentially. Um, remember we are coming from a very low base and so each increase should be a mini celebration but still I'm very wary that we are well behind still on the Victorian average. We need uh, we still need uh, to do some hard work to be optimistic to be strategic um, in the improvements that we do uh, and they are they are still required. But what a thrill to read about such improvements. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Thank you, Councillor Sphinx. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, I just want to thank as well the many, many organisations that are doing this work with council, alongside council, without council. There is just endless orgs across um, Greater Shepparton that are fighting to improve the lives of our kids and the outcomes of our under fives. Um, and as um, Councillor Brophy said, it is a low base. Uh, even after all of the, um, even after this really incredible result, we're still, our kids are still way behind. And I think that is, um, cannot be overstated. There's still so much work to do. But, you know, it takes a village, uh, as they say. And so I fully support councils and, and all of our continued work and funding to support our kids. Um, one of the interesting things, I suppose, that is going to have to happen now is to ask why they went up. Um, one of the cool and frustrating things about health promotion is that you see an issue, you try 20 different ways to fix it, and then you try to work out which one of those worked. And so now that's going to be the, the task to do. And the fact that these results came through and the improvements came through after almost the worst of COVID period when we were all at home, if the key to these results was that we were all at home with our kids, I don't, I don't quite know how we replicate that. We've all had to go back to work. We've had to go back to our lives. So 
But certainly there'll be an awful lot of learnings and I look forward to seeing what those are and to hopefully continuing to see these numbers improve. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? <clears throat> no, we will now go to vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Councillors, we now go to page 19 of the agenda, item 11.1, May 2022, monthly financial report. There is a recommendation. Can I have someone put forward a motion? Thank you, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. I'll move that the Council receive and note the May 2022, monthly financial report. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I have a Councillor second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? Just a couple of interesting factors regarding this. The report in itself is, is in the body of the agenda, but a couple of things that I keep on looking at is one of the uh, is the underlying surplus as a percentage of underlying revenue, and uh, we're tracking at 10.82 percent as an actual, as against uh, an adopted budget of uh, minus 11 percent. Uh, furthermore, I'm looking at the loans and borrowings, which is always uh, a, thing, a thing that uh, councils have got to be mindful of. And at the moment, uh, uh, our loans and borrowings as a percentage of rates is 25.8%. Now, we adopted the budget um, of 39.97% at the start of the year, and the target band goes somewhere between 40 and 60, so that tells me that we're tracking pretty well. The other one that I always like to highlight is the working capital, that is the current assets as a percentage of current liabilities. And at the moment, our current assets, uh, that is our liquidity, is 190.6% uh, uh, better than our current liabilities. And the adopted budget was at 136 So in many respects, we've probably got a lot, you know, everybody would love to be in that position going into the future. Our asset renewal, which is also very important because uh, uh, we try and keep those uh, somewhere around the 100 to 150 per cent of as a percentage of depreciation, and we're actually tracking at 112.15 per cent. Once it gets below that 100 per cent, it means we're just falling behind, but we've constantly over the year been in touch with that. In terms of our investments, um, we've got $32 million invested an average interest rate of 1.01. Hopefully uh, that might go up in, in the next uh, little bit. Um, six, to, six million dollars is invested in green term deposits and that's something that sits pretty strongly with myself. Uh, out of that we've got $127,000 of interest received. Our credit ratings, 43.8% uh, is A1, 28.1% uh, is, is uh, A1+, 28.1% is A1 and 15.6% is A2. So we're going pretty well. Let's talk about debtors. At the moment, uh, we've got outstanding uh, 1.3 uh, million outstanding, which is 68% of, uh, that's on 30, uh, zero to 30 days. And that's tr uh, tracking pretty well. I'd like to see that come down towards the end of the financial year. Um, our current rates debtors uh, is 12.37 million. And last year, at the same time, it was 12.11. So we're not that far off. Uh, we've got um, we've got 421 payment arrangements, which is interesting because uh, that means that people aren't paying their rates all in one hit. They're paying it either in quarterly or half yearly, other than annually. And uh, I think that's a very good initiative of the council. I won't go into any more. The operating statement's there for everybody to see, but I commend the um, uh, the recommendation to council. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Abdullah, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you very briefly. Uh, Councillor Dobson has covered it very well. I uh, just want to highlight that the adopted budget 2021-2022 had an operational deficit of nearly $14 million and this projected operational, uh, and the projection is that there'll be, a, um, that there'll be an operational surplus of $1.5 million, which is positive. Other indicators are also on track, as uh, Councillor Dobson has highlighted, and uh, the report also highlights um, very many areas where um, there has been positive or a negative uh, variance. So, um, for instance, user charges, when we are looking at our revenues, user charges is still projecting to be less than the adopted budget, and this is uh, an unfavorable variance, mostly due to a reduction in commercial waste volumes as cost growth, at cost growth land and uh, some other reasons which are highlighted in the report. Uh, Operating grants are projected to be more than the adopted budget. It's a favorable variance. Uh, basically, it's impacted by additional grant, fund, grant fundings. 
from various sources. And uh, operating contributions are also projecting to be more than the adopted budget. Um, and another highlight is the employee costs, which is basically projecting to be $1.02 million less than the adopted budget. It is favor it's a favorable variance, um, but the reality is that it is mostly due to staff vacancies across the organization. And we know that the staff vacancies, it does impact on our service delivery um, uh, capacity. So that's a little bit of um, explanation, uh, but all good otherwise. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Abdullah. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried and opposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 11.2 on page 22 and 23 and 24 of the agenda, which is 11.2, the 2022-2023 Greater Shepparton City Council budget. Councillors, there is a recommendation. Can I have someone put forward a motion, please? Councillor Dobson. Yes, uh, uh, Mayor Sally, I'll move that the recommendation in the agenda be adopted with the following change. After the total amount intended to be raised shown in point one from $87,365,518, to 86,813,808. That is a reduction of $551,710. The general rate to be altered from 69,547,909 to 689,549, and the culture and recreation rates be altered from 4,415 to 43,806. All other points remain unchanged except that. I noticed that when we look at general rates uh, 2.3, there is an, an, an adjustment in each of those, um, and I'll take that as read. So I'll, I'll move that. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I have someone second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to your motion? Thank you, Mayor Sali, and uh, this has been the subject of quite some debate, but I'll put these uh, issues in front of the Council. Up to these changes equate to the rates rise of 1% in place of a rates rise of 1.75%. The net reduction of rates collected is 551360 for the general rates and $350 in the recreational rates. The reductions apply to the general, farm, commercial, industrial and derelict rateable properties. In the first year of our current term, Council is elected to assist our community by delaying any increase in rates due to the COVID restrictions uh, on business and households. This decision was made in spite of the state government controlled ca rate cap of 1.75% allowable rates, ri rates rise being the preferred position of our council officers. In the space of 12 months, we now face a very different set of global and local economic conditions. Inflation has risen from less than 2% to in excess of 5%. And I note that the UK is suggesting 11% by year's end. Interest rates have risen dramatically across all financial sectors. And whilst our council borrowings are not large by local government standards, we must bear in mind the increased cost of borrowings. Again, council, along with our community members, is withstanding the worst of increase in power, fuel, consumables, and employee costs. Therefore, whilst a nil increase in the rates for the 22-23 financial year would be a preferable outcome for our community, the reality of the situation is that your councillors have a fiscal duty uh, to recommend a responsible budget while delivering the majority, but not, not all of community wants. There must be enough left in the budget to offset any potential unknown factors that the current volatile financial outlook may produce. Furthermore, there is every possibility that this time next year, the state government will in the, increase the rate cap from 1.75% to 4 or even 5% in line with expected inflation rates. To move from zero to these new rates would be an enormous hit to ratepayers' back pockets. Therefore, a 1% rate rise for this financial year is a midway point in an ideal, uh, between a, an, a, an ideal nil increase and the cap rate of 1.75%. It is noted that a nil increase in the annual rates would see a de de decreased income to Council at 1297000 over the financial year. In relation to issues such as complementary parking and free waste vouchers, 
that many of our councillors would like to see introduced in this budget, I make the following observations. Complimentary parking for the busy Christmas New Year period can be the subject of a notice of motion further into the calendar year, and I would be supportive of that. Further investigation in relation to parking arrangements as a whole should be recognised more fully on the completion of the Maud Street upgrades. In relation to complementary waste vouchers, this issue, uh, these issues should be explored more fully. Councillor Dobson, you've uh, three minutes. Would you like an additional? I would indeed. Granted. Thank you. In relation to the complementary waste vouchers, these issues should be explored more fully during the period of change of our four bin, uh, to our four bin waste collection service due to come online before the next financial period. This strategic approach will allow to map out an all-encompassing plan of waste management in general. Again, I stress the need for conservative planning in the light of the perfect storm of fiscal downgrading that is forecast by the experts. I therefore recommend to my colleagues that the budget reflects a 1% rates increase for the forthcoming financial year. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Abdullah, would you like to speak to that motion? Thank you, yes. Uh, so uh, I uh, support this motion uh, uh, and the general uh, and, and the rate rise of 1%. Uh, we know that the process of budget preparation started in September uh, late last year. It's a very tedious process. So thanks and first of all, thanks and well done to the staff for diligently carrying out this exercise. Uh, there are many considerations when preparing a budget. Councillor Dobson has highlighted some of the budgetary pressures. Um, on the one hand, there are community expectations of service delivery and an expectation of minimum pressure of rates on their pockets. And on the other hand, for council, there is, the, there is a, a responsibility and uh, for councillors, there is, this, there is uh, this legislative responsibility for the financial sustainability of the organisation. Um, not to mention the ground realities of the budgetary pressures that council, Councillor Dobson has already highlighted. Uh, we are looking at the rate capping of 1.75%. Uh, rates, as we all know, are the main source of revenue for council and council funds oper its operations and services uh, through that revenue. Um, there are other considerations also for council when preparing uh, a budget. Um, of course, um, to see whether a user pay service model is more desirable or was, uh, versus distributing the cost burden to the whole community. But of course, we have various strategies. We have our rates and revenue strategy. We have our financial 10-year financial management plan. So all these policies have to be considered and taken into account when we are uh, preparing and finalizing our budget and setting these uh, rates. Now, um, so as, you, as I've said, that fiscally responsible budget is one of the priorities, and but then there are competing objectives as well. Uh, the community's expectations and demands for services are growing disproportionately disproportionate, to council's ability to fund those services. That's a reality. And uh, the reality is also that uh, the underlying operational deficit, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very crucial for the council, for, this, for any organization to be financially sustainable. At the moment, we don't, we, our forecast is that we won't be able to get back to uh, operational surplus uh, until uh, 2025. So um, I'm okay to have this uh, rate rise as 1%, as we had already set an expe expectation during the draft budget. So it is fair to not go beyond 1%, but anything before that uh, will be very diff will make it very hard for council to retain its uh, or to maintain its financial sustainability. And um, yeah, so. Basically, I just want to thank everyone who had participated in the community consultation and made submissions. Some of those asks are now included in the final budget, such as food share and the ask from Shepherd and Search and Rescue Services. Uh, I just want to highlight that again that, can I have one minute extra? Of course. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so I just want to highlight that, uh, that, this, that the budget does not include everything that we as councillors or we as a community aspire to achieve. But whatever is included in the budget, it is also benefiting the community. So um, the projects and services included in the budget are all going to benefit the community. So um, as much as I would like to see every community expectation to be, uh, to be addressed, it is difficult. Um, so I urge everyone and my fellow councillors to think about all sides of the argument. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. 
Do we have any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? You, Councillor Spinks. Um, before I speak, I would like to foreshadow a motion, please. No problem. Thank you. I will be voting to support a second year of the 0% rate increase. We exist to serve our ratepayers, and it should be our responsibility to keep rates as low as possible every year. Uh, during, our during our campaigns and through COVID, the community made it very clear that they feel our rates are too much for them, more than the regular dialogue that will always accompany rates. And to only offer one year of rates relief would be tokenistic, in my opinion. As well, I would argue that right now the world is as harsh, if not more so, as it was during COVID, but I am not seeing the same response to support people. And so in this way, I'm asking council to help our community. The world is a pressure cooker right now, and I'm asking council to take on some of the heat. And considering that the waste charges are going up again, higher than the draft budget predicted, I don't see a benefit in increasing rates also. Because honestly, I don't know how many more increases I and so many others can absorb. If this was a budget that poured money into projects that directly helped our community reduce other costs, like massively increasing cycle path and footpath funding or providing free public transport so that we weren't as reliant on fuel or creating a program to put solar panels on roofs to help households save on energy bills or upgrading skate parks and playgrounds and community facilities across the municipality to provide free socialising and activity opportunities, all of which are completely made up by me right now but could absolutely be explored. If this was a budget filled with projects like that, then I would support the normal rate increase, but it is not. And so since I have no control over fuel prices or lettuce prices or gas prices or interest rates, I will instead use my moment at this table where I do have control. Zero percent. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Thank you, Councillor James. Thank you, uh, Mayor Sully. Um, look, I, um, I, I would support the, the zero percent proposal as, as outlined by um, Councillor Spinks. I mean, it's very important in race and some, in, uh, some very <coughs> important issues there. One of the things about um, our ratepayers have, have only had a short period um, for this I might, introduction. Sorry, I might just, to be speaking for. I might just, we are briefly, yeah. sorry, we're still talking about the 1% rate rise okay. here. Yeah. So I just wanted to ensure that you're aware of that. We will come yeah. back to the zero. foreshadowed motion okay. if this motion yeah. is lost. Yep. Are you still happy to do that? Yeah. Please talk to speak against, can't he? Yeah, but the way he started was that he was speaking in favour of the zero percent. So I just want to make sure that you're well aware we're still talking about the one percent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can continue if you like. So yeah. Well, it's a foreshadowed motion. I haven't moved the foreshadowed yet. Yeah, we haven't just moved okay. the foreshadowed yet. Can tell this plays out. Yeah. Right, well, I'll, I'll retract it and I'll speak when it's foreshadowed. When we move the foreshadowed motion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Is there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Councillor Summer. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sali. Uh, there's plenty of things about every budget that I'm never 100% happy with, so um, please don't take my objection personally. We have so much opportunity to improve people's lives, and personally, I don't think we're quite in the mark. Um, as mentioned, these are unprecedented hard times. The world is in economic instability, so much financial pressure, everyone's so tense. The minimum wage does not keep up with the cost of living, petrol, utilities, rising rent, higher interest rates. People are really struggling and that reality is not coming through in this document. It seems like business as usual. So in my eyes, it doesn't relieve hardship, which is a major priority at the moment, even though there was a proposed late addition that was brought forward by officers that was quite expensive. Um, that alone tells me we have plenty of meat on the bone, even though we've um, postponed that for now. And I'm almost 100% certain that no submission wanted higher rates, yet staff recommended a higher rate than what was proposed in the draft budget, which is disappointing when um, there was an understanding that councillors wanted to keep that quite low. Uh, so I can understand that um, policies and procedures are somewhat fixed in guiding our financial principles. But as an organisation, we need to remain flexible. There's emerging issues and we need to respond accordingly to things like COVID, things like um, interest rates. And I'm really tired of hearing this, this justification we use um, about losing hypothetical money. So each year, the finance team present the same argument about compounding. That's an argument that can literally be applied to any number greater than what's proposed. 
And in this case, the report says we'll lose $13 million over 10 years, which is more or less accurate if it's written on paper, but it doesn't account for any external variables at all. All the theory does is endorse growth for the sake of growth with no justification. We are in financially hard times and have a current environmental emergency. So there probably is a great deal of merit in altering what we project to be, uh, yeah, something, we shouldn't have to collect all this money. We need to aim for something more modest because I'm confident we can offer some financial respite as well as keep up with services. I won't agree to a budget of 1%. I believe that we all wanted a 0% and we've compromised and it's a compromise that is compromising our community when, when they can't afford to be compromised. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Before I go to Councillor Dobson's right of reply, I might just add some support around this proposal of 1%. Uh, we did obviously start the conversation at zero with councillors and, and, and fair enough, absolutely, where this started and, and where we've got to now over the past six months. The, the, the country financial uh, space has changed, the state financial space has changed and our local space has definitely changed. And I completely agree with Councillor Spinks that we're in a fortunate position that we can have an influence on where we want to go and, and offer some reprieve to our community, but we also have a responsibility to manage a $150 million organisation and ensure that we are stable as we possibly can moving forward. Now, where we started and where we are now over the course of three months, our financial landscape has changed and is going to continue to change. I would, would have been comfortable if things were stable, but they're not. I find it very difficult to support 0% right now with the consideration that next year we will almost be forced to consider something a lot higher than one, possibly 2%, and that will be a significant burden on our community. I feel that the 1% right now is a reasonable uh, step forward to manage a lot of things uh, that our council organisation and, and provide a relatively uh, cost-effective approach to our community, considering exec have proposed 1.75, which is well and truly fair enough for them to propose that because things are skyrocketing with costs. That's where I'll leave it. I will now to go to Councillor Dobson for his right of... Thank you, Mayor Sally. And I... Sorry. Um, sorry, are there any other councillors that would like to speak for the motion? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Councillor Brophy. Um, I'm wanting to speak against the, uh, the motion put forward by Councillor Dobson. No Just problem. to be very clear on it. <laughs> go for it. Okay, thank you. Um, so, as, as has been pointed out by my fellow councillors, certainly there have been changes since the draft budget had been presented at the April OCM. And what do these changes have been? Well, we, we do have higher interest rates. We do have higher inflation. And we do have an increase in the base wages as well. And council is, no, is, is not immune to that as well, as, as are our residents. So, there have been uh, some changes. And uh, these have also been the inclusion of some of the community asks post the draft budget. And some are very worthwhile projects and services. And over uh, $300,000 has been added to the outgoing line. Councillors too have had their wish list. And although somewhat accommodated, some of the bigger ticket items have not been included. Hence, I believe that our ratepayers do need support at this point in time. We are still very much in a post COVID recovery phase, and I therefore support for the second year, and maybe only the second year, a base increase of 0%. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Brophy. We will now go to, oh, are there any other councillors that, I think everyone has reply. spoken. Yeah, so everyone has spoken, so we'll now go to Councillor Dobson for his right of reply. Thank you, Mayor Sally, and I'd like just to remind councillors on two issues. One, that the money that we raise is is ratepayers' money and almost in trust do we have that money in our bank account for the use of our ratepayers. And I think we've got to be very careful on how we go about um, uh, raising that money. A and the idea of having a second year of nil increase, to me, if I might say so, is not quite the responsible way of going about it. I, I would point out quite strongly that next year, um, Call it four or five percent or more will be the rate cap. We we could go to that. Uh, we've been told quite strongly uh, over the period that 
um, uh, we have a responsibility, and I agree with this, we have a responsibility to our ratepayers to run a financially viable operation. You cannot have rising costs each year uh, of the magnitude that is supposed, supposedly coming and not have your price increases. It's a bit like, it's a bit like if I want to buy a pair of shoes and I want to buy on last year's prices when the retailer has got to pay this year's uh, cost to, to bring those pair of shoes in. You cannot keep doing that. I think a 1% uh, is fair and equitable. It shows to the ratepayers um, that we have their back in terms of trying to keep their burden, their, their rates burden down. But at the same time, I've got to say to you, we have a very, very big responsibility to this organisation to keep it running and to provide things like the White Knight that's coming up soon, to provide all the free things that we come to have, to provide the nice lake, to provide all the stuff that Tatura's got. We need to have a viable operation. And so I implore you, councillors, to look at 1%. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour of Councillor Dobson's motion, or the motion. Those against? Motion lost. That now brings us to Councillor Spinks foreshadowed motion. Thank you very much, Councillor Sally. Governance, let me know if I do this wrong. Um, so I would like to move a motion that the council move the rates as written on page 22 to 24 of the agenda with the following changes, that the total amount in point one is changed from 87,365,518 to 86,068,514, that the general rates change from 69,547, 69,547,909 to 68,251,628, and that the cultural and recreational rate change from $44,156 to 43433 with the additional changes to 2.3, which are printed in this motion. I'll just get confirmation. You happy with that? Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Can I have someone second that motion? I'll second that motion. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you. Yes, just briefly. Um, I mean, I think I outlined where I stand um, in relation to Councillor Dobson's motion, um, but I just want to add to it. I do really understand the need to balance both. I think we all do around the table. This is, is something we will have to do every year. We have to balance the needs of all, and Council's costs go up. That is a reality. But also right now, the reality is that everybody is passing their costs on to the ratepayer, onto the consumer. It's the person at the end of the line that's getting all of the costs. And as I said, we are raising the waste charge to cover those costs. We are asking more of our community. So for this year, and I would argue this year probably finally, uh, that I would argue we should be doing a 0% rate rise. We should not be asking more of our community at a time when they just don't have more to give. And this is the... Every year, this is the same conversation. Do you take from the community to deliver services or do you leave it with the community for them to have in their pocket? That's ultimately the balance we try to, you know, to walk the line of every year. This year, I'm saying leave it with the community member. Let them pay their rent, let them pay their groceries, let them just have that tiny bit, and it will be a tiny bit, and I know that, but let them have it just this year. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillor James, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. Uh, take two. Let's start again. <laughs> uh, great example uh, on that pair of shoes, Councillor Dobson. I think I'll consider that next time I'll go buy a pair. Um, <laughs> I support the 0% proposal as outlined by Councillor Spinks and also reiterated by um, Councillor Brophy as well. Um, our rate pays have had, uh, you know, have had a, only a short period of this introduction, as Councillor Brophy said. Uh, you know, we really would would prefer that to be, um, you know, two years. So I believe we need to continue with this allowance. Our circular economy is struggling, particularly 
um, you know, coming out of the impacts of COVID. And we all know that what the impacts of COVID had, have had on our community, on our businesses and, and, our, and our families and our communities too as well. Increasing costs in our households are affecting our community members fuel groceries and as councillor um, council Sphinx had said, you know, the price of lettuce, uh, lettuce now is up to ten, eleven dollars, which is ridiculous. Um, you know, just to mention a few of course, um, but the cost of living is becoming a strain, even more so uh, with no wage increases from for average earners. You know, so let's not compound um, the financial pressures or burdens placed on our community members. It's already there. We've already got that that strain on them right now. Let's continue to support them and not put on any more strain on their already struggling budgets that they've got at the moment. So, so I would encourage and support and, uh, and thank Council Spinks for, for proposing this too as well. But I would in, encourage us to, con, uh, to continue to consider the 0%. Thank you, Mayor Sully. Thank you, Councillor James. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Councillor Dobson. Thank you, Mayor Sully. I'll just remind councillors that you are proposing to take $1,297,000 out of the existing budget. The question you've got to ask yourselves, if you're going to take that out of the existing budget, what's going to, what, what, what services or where's that going to come from? Um, it's going to come from, I don't know, we, we will have to, we'll, we'll find out. But it's a situation that you've got to keep in mind. I understand your rationale. Uh, in many ways, I, I, I agree with it. But I've also got one eye on the viability of this operation. And to take $1.3 million over the financial year, out of, out of the budget for the financial year is a big ask. And I'd ask you to consider that. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sully. I think the question isn't about taking $1.3 million out of the budget. It's about whether we should take $85 million out of people's pockets. So I'm still not convinced that this budget goes far enough to alleviate hardship. However, now there's a chance to at least lower the rate rise to zero for another year. I will speak in support and use this time to present my thoughts in more detail. So with the late budget additions, um, it's great to see a few community wins, particularly for small towns who often say that they can be overlooked. So uh, I just want to mention the landscaping and demolition of the Katandra Hall. It won't happen immediately. There's still time to investigate retaining the facade. Now, I'm not promising that that's going to happen, but passing this budget doesn't take that option out of the equation. So I just wanted to give them some reassurance there. Uh, in terms of the cultural and recreational rate, uh, that appears to be a legacy agreement with those listed prop properties in the agenda. And that may or may not align with our current values in 2022. So I've requested a review into these properties with the idea of removing those that profit from the gambling industry, which may be quite controversial. And obviously it will involve further consultation and discussion but I just want to flag it here for the intent of information that that conversation might come up. Now, you all know what I think of the municipal charge. I mean, if we did not have a municipal charge, that would immediately inject millions of dollars back into our economy because it's going into people's pockets as disposable cash and they can spend it. So regardless of what we call the municipal charge, the reality is that that flat fee against all properties reduces the amount of rates that we need to collect. And that means that ratepayers on the higher end gain a rather large subsidy from people who are least likely to afford it. So I'd like to see this charge staggered out, and I've been saying that for a decade, but it's just so that the average ratepayer has $194.5 more to spread around. And that way everyone's paying their fair share without that question mark around what the municipal charge does or is. The waste is concerning by increasing by 10%. Uh, that's a change to the draft budget, so people haven't had a chance to comment on that. And waste services are essential. I'm not sure it's right to um, not give people a chance to opt out of bins that they don't need. It's a core cool council service that I believe it should be subsidised by the general rate because the use pay system ultimately leads to people trying not to pay 
and that can cause dumping, it causes um, co-mingled risk, um, contamination in the bins, it causes all sorts of angst in the community. People don't necessarily want to go to the transfer station because they don't know how much they're going to get charged. So this 10% Increasing. Summer, would you like an additional amount of time? Um, yes. Granted. I, I might skip over the waste charge because it's self-explanatory. I'll just mention that last financial year we did make some budget gains. Cosgrove tenders came in under budget. Depreciation was less than expected. There was a reduction in materials and services. Obviously, these are offset by losses in fees and charges due to COVID. And I'm mentioning that because it shows movements like these. It, it just illustrates how resilient our team can be in managing changes almost on a day-to-day -day basis. They're great at accommodating change. So we shouldn't be fearful of adding things to the budget or taking things out. And I hope we use our democratic right to notices of motion later in the year, um, if this passes, so that we can properly consider our individual election asks, because that's what I intend to do, and that's what the people voted us in to do. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Well, would you like to speak against the motion? I do. Thank you, Councillor Abdul. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yes, I, uh, as I've said earlier, um, from uh, I feel that one percent retry retries is um, is a good middle ground. It's not ideal. Um, 1.75 is also not ideal because we uh, we went with the draft budget of 1% and we have already set an expectation with our community. But 0% is, is absolutely not um, ideal because it is not a financially responsible move as um, Councillor Dobson has highlighted. It sets a very low base for rates revenue for future years and which, which means that it will take longer for council to return to operational surplus. And Councillor Fernsummer has, um, has stated that it's not about uh, saving $1 million from the budget, it's about taking away $85 million or so from people's pockets. Um, I think that's, that's not um, how I would interpret that why rates are used, uh, why rates are uh, applied. Uh, we all know, and let's not forget, that the rates revenue is needed to help council deliver services, all for the benefit of the community. So if the idea is to not have any rates at all, or rates revenue at all, I just wonder how the organization will function, how the organization will be able to deliver some important services. Uh, and we have a range of services that council uh, delivers to this community. Um, there are capital works projects, there are uh, facilities which the community cannot do uh, without, such as maternal and child health, such as library services, you have roads, we have rubbish. Talk about the rubbish, uh, I think that uh, rate, uh, that increase in the charges has been mentioned. But I just want to make it very clear that this increase in waste management is due to the recycling curbside collection contract. And that uh, increase has been made by the contractors, so we have to absorb that. And by absorbing, it means that you know we don't have any other um, avenue to get that additional funding. So that's why it's now reflected in the rates, um, in, in in the rates basically in the rates revenue. Uh, sorry, not in the yeah in, uh, as a waste charge. So um, look, there are uh, there are pros and cons, but uh, but I think we have to also just think about. The community, everything that the council is doing is for the benefit of the community, but the council really needs to remain uh, financially sustainable, sustainable to be able to deliver those services because um, a poor uh, financial management um, of council would only hurt the community in the end. It's not going to hurt uh, any other uh, municipality. It's going to hurt people from our municipality. That's all that I have to say. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, Just a point of clarification. I didn't say that we shouldn't charge any rates at all. That's fine. Um, we will now go. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Uh, before we go to Councillor Spinks, right or reply, I'll just obviously echo the comments that I mentioned earlier regarding the 1% rate rise that, and as Councillor Abdullah 
highlight 1.75 is an ideal, 1% is an ideal, and 0% is an ideal. The middle ground is 1% based on what we propose to the community and what has changed in the um, economic circumstances you know, within the whole country over the course of the last couple of months. Um, I feel that this offers a bit of stability moving forward into next year. What, what comes over the course of the next six months and 12 months, we don't know. It, it doesn't look as good as what it, what it could be. I'm just uh, mindful of us hitting rate payers next year with something beyond a 1.75, which would have been heavily disputed this year. That is all I will say. We will now go to Councillor Sphinx for your right of reply. Thank you, Mayor Sali. Um, briefly, three points to tap on. Um, the first being the waste charge and why it's relevant. Um, Councillor Dobson, you did say that uh, it's a million, you know, one and a half million coming out of the council budget available, and that is true, but it's a million and a half that's going on to the waste charge as well that's coming out of communities' pockets. So it's about weighing those two things up, I suppose. Council will take a hit for it, and I acknowledge that, but it's also already a million and a half extra that's coming out of the um, ratepayers' pocket. So do we take out three instead to cover both? I argue not. The second point is, uh, that I just want to echo that council doing we deliver incredible services and our council do an incredible job of that and I think we're all committed to continuing that work and um, making sure that there is the funding available. This is uh, you know a debate we'll have every year. And the third point I want to make is about that debate. I really appreciate that everyone around this table, the nine, nay, seven of us, are coming at it from our own perspectives and our own thoughts and opinions. We all have the same information. Council's given us everything we need. And now we sit here all wanting to do the best for community that we can. And we just have a little argument on what's the best way to do that. And I really appreciate the democratic process and being able to sit around and have this civil debate around the topic, no matter, regardless of the outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour. Thank you. Those against? Motion carried. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 11.3, <coughs> one of the agenda contracts awarded under delegation May 2022. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor put that forward? Councillor James. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, I'd like to move the recommendation under heading 11.3 on page 31, contracts awarded under delegation May 2022. I'll read out the recommendation. Recom recommendation that the Council, one, note the contracts awarded under delegation pursuant to a formal tender process or renewed for the reporting period, and two, note the requests for tender advertised but not yet awarded. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Councillor James. Can I have a councillor second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor James, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mayor Sally. Mayor Sally. Um, in the um, recommendation number one, uh, under that uh, under the recommendation, contracts awarded or renewed under delegated authority by the CEO, uh, director or manager. There are three, uh, Mayor Sally, consisting of software renewal, and this is just one of many um, of updates that we have to continually do in our software renewal. You'll understand how much um, uh, the software in our, across all of our council and et cetera, um, is, is huge and mammoth. Um, the second part of that is the water mains relocation in Wellsford Street for an upgrade. Uh, and the third part of that is curb and channel and drainage in Tatura in Mars Street. The second part of the recommendation, um, the request for tenders advertised, not yet awarded, there are seven, um, and these uh, tenders include cleaning services for the SAM building, uh, construction of Murchison Rail Trail Bridge um, Stage 1 upgrade, um, playground and barbecue shelter SAM at the SAM precinct, precinct. Um, installation of tree bud lighting in Shepparton and um, also uh, Tatcher as well, and Nixon Street reconstruction. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'll just mention how great it is to have this item in the agenda. It's uh, very transparent and it's one of the things I flick to most. So all of these have been done under delegation, which doesn't cross our um, table. But uh, it's great to see what's been going on. So 
I'm pretty excited about more tree bud lighting and a nature playground barbecue shelter at Sam. Um, just these little bits and pieces that would go under the radar. It's nice to keep in touch with the community by switching to this and having a look and seeing what we're delivering. So I recommend everybody have a look each month. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Councillors, we now go to page 34 of the agenda, item 11.4, which is instrument of delegation to the Chief Executive Officer S5. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor put forward a motion? Councillor Summer, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. I'll move the recommendation as a motion as printed on page 34 of the agenda. Councillor Summer, can I please have someone second that motion? Councillor Brophy? I will second that motion. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Thank you. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. Not much to say. Uh, this will come up every six months in terms of housekeeping. It's just a recommendation by the MAV that we do this every six months. I've been advised that there's only very minor changes. It's quite a large document, no change to delegation, so I'm happy for it to pass. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. Just very briefly, this is normal procedures, as uh, Councillor Summer pointed out. Uh, we, councillors, um, uh, we're very strategic, and the CEO is very much uh, at the level of or the head of operations of the organisation. Um, we need to, to appropriately and legally give effect to allow the CEO to, to put into operation the powers uh, to get the organisation moving. And it is not just a pick, tick and flick to some degree, and we do need to be very mindful that over, over time costs, both operational and constructional, um, have increased significantly, and that should at various times be reflected in the monetary level of the authorisation um, prior to coming to council to approve. So we do need to be very mindful that we do give the right delegation to the CEO and, and enough to be able to get things moving and not have to come back to a meeting each time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? No. Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? No. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 11.5 on page 37 of the agenda under instrument of delegation to members of council staff S6. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor please put that forward as a motion? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Sally. I'll move the, uh, the council in the exercise of the powers conferred by the legislation referred to in the attached instrument of delegation resolves that, and there are four points to it, uh, which I'll I'll take it as read, if that's okay, or do you want me to read them out? No, uh, whatever you want. To. Okay, take them as read. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I please have someone second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councilor Would you like to speak to the motion? It, it, this is just the same as the previous motion. It's uh, it's a legislative type motion, administrative type motion. We we passed the last one in October of 21, and this just keeps it up to date every six months. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Nope, we'll see it again in October. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? No. Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? No, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried and opposed. Councillors, we now go to page 40 of the agenda, which is item 12.1, proposed lease of council land for the realisation of the Monara Centre for Regional Excellence. Count. Yeah. Do you have a conflict of interest? Yeah. yeah. No worries. Do you want me to stay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor James. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor please put that forward as a motion? Councillor Spinks. Thank you, Count uh, Mayor Sally. I'd like to move the recommendation as it is printed on page 40 of the agenda. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Can I please have someone second that motion? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Abdul. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, yes, I will. Um, before we go on, the irony is not lost on me that the only Aboriginal councillor has had to step away from the vote and that it is now the non-Aboriginal members that must make this decision to support or not to support the Manara project proceeding. Once again, non-Aboriginal people hold the power over Aboriginal decisions and I think it's important that we recognise and voice that privilege and position 
and further that we are making decisions to lease land to traditional custodians whose sovereignty was never ceded and whose land it always was and always will be. To the matter, the Monara Centre for Regional Excellence is proposed to be an Indigenous-led sporting and education precinct in Shepparton. Working with a number of project partner organisations, including the Rumbalara Football and Netball Club, the University of Melbourne, Kayala Institute Limited, Greater Shepparton City Council, the State of Victoria and the Department of Premier and Cabinet, this project aims to create future opportunities for the Aboriginal community of the Goulburn Valley. The MCRE will be a state-of-the-art, nationally significant centre designed as a hub of connection and transformation for Indigenous and non-Indigenous people across Australia. It is intended that the MCRE complex will be run by Monara Limited, a not-for-profit entity comprising members from Rumbalara Football Netball Club, the University of Melbourne, Victorian Government, Kayala Institute and Council. Aboriginal designed, Aboriginal led, Aboriginal managed and an incredible opportunity for all. The concept was first promoted in 2009 and was included within the Shepparton Sports Precinct Master Plan in 2009 as well. Its home has always been at the Shep Sports Precinct and it is very exciting to finally be at this point. At the December 2021 Council meeting, we resolved to commence consultation to give effect to the intention to enter into a lease agreement with Monara Limited for the purpose of providing the delivery of the Monara Centre for Regional Excellence. A small number of submissions were received and the key themes were a lack of car parking, the impacts on the sports stadium expansion, the location being inappropriate, and then support for the project. So I'll quickly address the concerns. Both the car parking and the stadium expansion have both been considered and addressed with the master plan and stadium upgrade, upgrade design work. Car parking is absolutely essential and there is plenty of room for both. And the location has been earmarked for this project for well over a decade. Monara was always intended to make its home at the sports precinct. And so here we are, consultation is complete, the land is ready, and it's time to endorse the leasing of council land to realise the Monara Centre for Regional Excellence. This is a game-changing opportunity to develop and celebrate Aboriginal excellence, to attempt to close the gaps from a place of Aboriginal self-determination and have it all happen in our very own backyard. Personally, I cannot wait to see it finally come to life. Thank you, well, thank you Councillor Spinks. Councillor Abdul, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you. Very briefly, uh, Mayor Sali. Uh, Councillor Sphinx has very uh, adequately uh, covered all the details, background and benefits. I just want to say that I fully support the establishment of this precinct, which aims to bring enormous advantages and opportunities to the Aboriginal community and also to the wider community. It's a state-of-the-art centre. It's first of its kind in Australia. It will put our region in a very positive light. And Greater Shepparton City Council's contribution uh, to the project is uh, through the peppercorn lease of this land. And, but this partnership is strategic and it has considerable uh, community benefits, social cohesion, health and well-being, education and sports outcomes, and, uh, and this sense of pride uh, that is really important. Uh, so the partnership will facilitate the development of this uh, precinct. Uh, Councillor Sphinx has already highlighted the main <coughs> concerns through the consultation process and I am satisfied with the con conversation report that is attached to this um, agenda that it uh, summarizes and addresses the concerns. I'm satisfied with Council's contribution to this groundbreaking project that will bring many positive outcomes for the community and the region. So fully supportive. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Uh, Mayor Sally, would I be able to uh, foreshadow a motion, please? No problem, thank you. Mayor Sally, with permission of the mover, can I please suggest an alteration of one word? Um, bear with me. Uh, just. Um, Hang on a sec, just wait, sorry. What would you like altered? Uh, so. Point two, I'd like it to read, endorse the leasing of council-owned land at 120, 174 New Merca Road at 80 Packham Street, Shepparton to Monara Limited for up to a term of 50 years at a peppercorn rental to realise the Monara Centre for Regional Excellence, uh, including the including what's in the... Um, bracket there as well. Yes. Oh my gosh. So I'd really just like to include the words up to between four and A in point two. That's fine. Councillor Spinks, do you approve of that? Yep. Yes, Abdullah, do you approve of that? I do. Thank you. Thank you. That will now form part of the motion. Um, Brophy, Councillor Brophy, <laughs> got your 
I got your uh, foreshadow. Thank yeah. you. Um, <laughs> That's right. Any... I'd like to with withdraw my foreshadow motion. <laughs> that was the amendment that needed to happen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Dobson. Just quickly, um, again, I think this shows leadership within the Greater Shepparton City Council to partner with others, um, including Kaila Institute, who I've had a bit to do with over the years, uh, to have the Manara Centre uh, formed. Um, it, I, I think we're batting above our, or boxing above our weight, so to speak, in terms of what we do in Indigenous affairs, and I think it's it's been terrific to have Councillor James on, on the council who's been able to give some direction uh, in a lot of Aboriginal um, uh, issues that are around. And uh, I think this, is, this, this will just take us to the next step forward. So I completely endorse it and I congratulate you for putting the motion up. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Brophy. Thank you, Mayor Sali. Um, this future facility, um, has a multitude of stakeholders, all of whom are working really collaboratively to bring about the best possible outcome. This is a must, but it does need acceleration. It needs financial input more so than what there's, is there currently. And that's really to come from obviously the state and federal coffers, hopefully. It needs tangible interaction from all the stakeholders and including Greater Shepparton City Council as well. What is our uh, marketing hasn't been great. I must say, um, it is four major projects emanating from one site, one campus, if you like, and it'll include an academy, a university, a cultural and, hor and uh, heritage competency, and a regional centre for sporting excellence. The will is there, the drivers are there, it just needs to happen. And for those who are doing the marketing on it, try this. Four exciting projects, one incredible campus. There you go. Thank you. Noted. Uh, thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Right. Uh, before we go to the vote, uh, I will obviously just back up the comments that have been made by my fellow councillors. It's always good to speak at the end because um, it's been very well put how important this project is. It's a good step that we will now start to see this realised uh, in the very near future. It's going to provide a big investment to our local economy and the opportunities that will come from it are, are endless and, dare I say it, who knows what it might do in the uh, regional city games as well and the opportunities it could present from that. So, good project. Looking forward to it, seeing it uh, hit the ground. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Can somebody please get Councillor James? He's coming. I think I can hear him. Can I trip? Councillor James. Councillors, we now go to page 49 of the agenda, which is item 12.2 Adoption of Amendment C228. GSHE to the Greater Shepparton Planning Scheme application of the public acquisition overlay to realise shared paths. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor please move that? Councillor Abdullah. Thank you, Mayor Sali. I would like to move the recommendation on page 49 as the motion, and uh, I won't read it. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, no problem. It's uh, in that uh, motion here. Yeah. Thank you. Can I have a councillor please second that motion? Councillor Brophy, Councillor Abdullah, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you. So this um, motion basically includes public acquisition overlay to acquire part of the land at 7265 Midland Highway, Marutna, for developing walking paths and public open space. So as we know that the provision and development of walking and cycling infrastructure within Greater Shepparton is supported by many policies and strategies. To give you a little bit of background of this uh, planning scheme amendment, in 2021, the council had resolved to prepare a planning scheme amendment for the acquisition of part of the private lands at three sites. Uh, this was mainly to build public open space, uh, spaces, uh, shared paths, and floodplain. Later, uh, 97 Creeks landowners, they agreed to council's terms and conditions for the purchase of the land. So the C228 planning scheme amendment did not include um, this particular land um, um, 
in the exhibition. And during the exhibition of this amendment, uh, we received five submissions, uh, and they were all from various referral authorities, and none of them objected to the public acquisition of the, this private land. Uh, since the exhibition was prepared, the uh, 560 Archer Road land owners, they progressed on the planning permit for the subdivision of the land and the residential development subdivision. Uh, and, it, and it also included vesting the land to the council to build shared paths. So that means that that matter has now been settled and this uh, 560 Archer Road uh, will be removed from C228 uh, G his HE before submitting it to the planning minister for approval. Now, uh, this motion is all about the post-exhibition update to this amendment, which is only about uh, <clears throat> public acquisition of the land in Murupna, the, um, the, the address in Murupna. And uh, subsequently, the planning scheme amendment will be submitted to the minister for approval. It's now a very straightforward procedural planning matter, and I'm comfortable to adopt the post change and to submit it to the minister for approval. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Sali. Just briefly, uh, this for me is a no-brainer. It is part of the River Connect Paths Master Plan and has been for seven years. The public acquisition overlay, as uh, alluded to by Councillor um, Abdullah, uh, it highlights exactly what it's about, but it is adding to the comprehensive cycling and walking paths that are making up Greater Shepparton uh, as one of the most livable regional cities that there is. We have the climate, we have the topography, we have the people and we have the impetus to expand our cycling and walking pathway network. I note that all submissions from the public were supportive and I, I also wholeheartedly support this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? No, are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Right, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 12.3, which is on page 54 of the agenda, Greater Shepherd and Heritage Advisory Committee Annual Report 2021. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor please move a motion? Councillors, I need a mover. Can I please have a, uh, what, are you, what are you moving, Council? Oh, the rec the, the mo I move that the Council receive and note the Attached Greater Shepherd and Heritage Advisory Committee Annual Report 2021 for the year ended 30th of December, 31st December 2021. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I have a Councillor please second that motion? <laughs> Councillor Brophy, sorry about you, mate. Councillor Brophy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Thank you. Councillor Brophy. Uh, Yes, sorry, you want me to speak on it now? Oh, no, no, if you just oh, so I, back. I do. Yes, I do second it. Thank you. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? Um, look, we're receiving this report. Uh, the council authorised the formation of that this committee uh, at an OCM in, in uh, 17th of January 2012, a long time ago. Uh, as part of the resolution, council adopted a terms of reference to guide the future of the committee. And we've got two councillors, uh, one voting member from each of the 10 member organisations, up to six community reps unaffiliated with any of these organisations, and up to two members of council's strategic planning team and council's heritage advisory advisor. Uh, they've provided their ninth annual report to inform council of their activities um, uh, at the committee's uh, monthly meeting held on June the 6th, uh, 2022, the committee agreed to pre present the 21 annual report to council and for council to receive and note the report. Um, there's not a lot more that we can say. It's uh, all we're doing is receiving uh, this uh, report. Um, the advisory committee does a very good job at, look, at helping to look after those buildings around town that need, uh, need some special care. And so I commend the, the motion to the, to, to the council. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mayor Sali. This advisory committee has done a plethora of work over the last two COVID-affected years. Uh, they continue to be a proactive and a passionate committee. Um, and reading their report, it highlights why we need such an advisory body. Um, and of course, without checking the, the terms of reference, it would have I would have liked to have seen maybe uh, a referral uh, to them on perhaps some of the more controversial heritage decisions as a reference point and maybe getting some collective wisdom back from them in regards to that as well. But irrespective, I applaud strongly the work that they do and continue to do. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sully. Uh, what can I say? I've just been a new addition to that uh, committee uh, for, the follow for the last year, and it's definitely been one of my favourite committees. And I think that's due to the calibre of having such committed and passionate committee members. It's just an absolute pleasure. I look forward to going there every time. And staff too, the planners are so open. We all have respectful conversations. Everybody's quite strong in their opinions, but um, together we seem to um, land on these um, amazing outcomes and ideas and um, events that wouldn't happen without that wealth of knowledge about Greater Shepparton's history. Um, their, wealth is, their wealth of knowledge is immeasurable and it does continue to grow. Uh, enormous respect for all the members, proud of what they've achieved. And I agree with Councillor Brophy that they are a resource but of this council and they should be used far more than they are. So um, anyone with a keen interest in heritage, please grab a copy of this um, annual report and see what it is that the committee does. We run a number of events and there's always more opportunity to learn. You could put your hands up and be part of the committee. It'd be great to have some younger members in there. Um, anything you need, if you're curious at all, grab a copy of the document and see what you think. But uh, it's important for a city that's lost so much heritage to have that connection to what has gone before. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor James. Thank you, uh, Mayor Sully. Um, no, I just wanted to add that you know this uh, the committee here last year had two two of our councillors located to the, to that committee, and it was Councillor Abdullah and, and Councillor Fern Summer. Can I thank them both for their contribution towards that um, sitting on that committee in 2021? Um, and as Councillor Dobson pointed out, it's the ninth. This is the ninth annual report. Um, obviously operating since 2012, and that's very that's great for our community to have that heritage committee here in place. Um, um, this year, I have replaced um, Councillor Seema Abdullah. We've done a bit of a swap um, in that, so so I'm looking forward to, um, uh, to participating in that um, and and sort of providing some some cultural knowledge on the heritage issues too as well. Um, can I also note, though, Mayor Sally, that in 2020 the report. Um, we uh, commented that in 2021 the committee meetings were affected by COVID um, and, and virtual meetings were utilised and the committee anticipate this year um, for that to be uh, uh, prepared for this to be um, uh, ongoing and becoming a format of meetings in this year, so in 2022. So um, usually uh, they were affected the meetings last year and, and, uh, and some of the meetings this year, but um, it's, it's basically the they are hoping for that format to continue this year with um, a little bit of um, virtual meetings. So I uh, obviously approve for the 20, 2021 report. Thank you, Councillor James. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Abdullah. Thank you, Ms. Ali. Uh, just uh, want to say that, uh, of course, uh, as a councillor delegate on this community, uh, on this committee advisory committee for five years, um, until late last year when Councillor um, uh, James um, uh, was assigned to this committee, I can only say that I have so much praise for this committee. I have always been amazed by the by the commitment, by the knowledge, and by the energy of the of all the members who are sitting on this committee, <laughs> and I'm very pleased that Councillor Summer and Councillor James are um, are attending these uh, committee meetings and they are enjoying this time. So, uh, thanks and well done to everyone involved in this committee. Thank you, Councillor Dula. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? No. Before we go to the vote, I'll just uh, again highlight the importance. Of people volunteering to be on our committees that help you know, shape Greater Shepherd and we're very grateful and thankful for the contribution that you make and obviously I'll back up all the comments that have already been said. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried and opposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 12.4 on page 57. Agenda comprehensive report on Shepherd and CBD complementary parking initiative. I'll declare a conflict of interest. Yes, Ali. Councillor Dobson. Councillors, there is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor move it as a motion? Councillor Brophy. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. I would like to move the following recommendation. 
which is different than what was originally uh, proposed and printed uh, in the material. But the recommendation that the council one is exactly the same as read, the two is exactly the same as read, but without items uh, point three and four. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? Councillor Summer. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, look, thank you, Mayor, Mayor Sally. Of course, we go back in a little bit of history here because um, it, this was the notice of motion that I put forward at the February uh, OCM, the Ordinary Council meeting. Um, and of course, part of that stipulation was to, to bring forward a comprehensive report on the complementary parking, on the analysis and the data and the, and the fiscal implications that it would be if we were to include it in the forthcoming budget. Um, without going through the details of that particular notice of motion, we did receive last month an interim report and subsequently we now have the comprehensive report. And um, can I applaud to the uh, sustainability team who have put that uh, forward in terms of working really hard to get all that uh, in place uh, to the councillors, including the briefings as well. When we look at it, uh, a lot of people look at the complementary parking in a fiscal sense. But if we go back in history as to why parking, um, actual paid parking meters were introduced into the city, and we go back many, many decades, long before uh, I was in short pants, but we go back a long way as to why this was introduced. And it was to stimulate movement for car parking. It wasn't as an income stream. Now it's evolved into that, but if you look back as to how it evolved is that originally people, there was only one CBD in Shepparton, one central business district. We didn't have the, the satellite shopping. In fact, there were no uh, supermarkets in those days. So there, were, there was one central point. And of course, all the employees would be gathered in the CBD because that's where they were working. But to stimulate customers coming through, uh, we put in uh, timed and then of course, then parking meters to move that on. And that hasn't changed. That's the whole ra rationale around why we need to move people on. But the time parking, I but still believe, does, does do that. Um, I've read the report and I've read the analysis and we do st we still have off-street complementary car parking and that's been a great initiative and I think it's being used far more now than what it ever has been. So it's really hard to define uh, and I think um, it might have even been yourself, Mayor Sali, who brought up that it's a bit of the vibe. It's, <laughs> you know, can I take um, you know, an acronym out of that? A bit of the vibe and vibe is short for vibrant. We are a vibrant CBD. We are going to have the Maud Street Mall opening up um, to, to traffic and we're going to need people to come back into the centre. People will still shop out at, at uh, Riverside or they'll still shop um, out at um, the marketplace or even the northern precinct area that's going to come about. They still will shop in Marupna and they still shop in Tatura. But this actually uh, has people coming back into the city. I'm, I'm very much for inner city living and I think this adds to it for people to be able to move in and out to go in, grab a coffee, it's timed, people understand it. So I'm still supportive of that, um, but I do appreciate the, the report coming back. It may not be included in uh, this year's uh, budget, but we will certainly be looking at that uh, coming up to the summer months. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Ms. Sally. Um, right up until this term, I've actually been an advocate for paid parking to manage traffic in the city. I figured if we disincentivise parking on street in front of shops, like we reduce the times and increase the parking fees, then people would use off street parks, which should be arguably um, free and untimed all day. So that way people know exactly where to go, where they can't stay, why, you know, that sort of thing. But um, the more I think about it, the more I think um, we need to welcome people to our city, not punish them. Um, the fines are quite large. They're on the maximum end of the scale, which does have a disproportionate effect on people who cannot afford to pay that fine. Like kids could go hungry because of these fines. Again, I'm looking at the community, not necessarily what we collect, but um, I'm happy you've taken those last two points out because that doesn't send a message that we're gonna continue charging people to come and shop. Uh, all I'll say is whatever we decide, we need to settle on that, please. <laughs> for the next couple of years, can we be consistent? Because chopping and changing can be so confusing for the public and being inconsistent can put them at risk of further fines because they think it's free when it's not. 
Um, and it's great to see the council on the front foot with digital technology. Paysay has been a huge success without people carrying coins around. Um, and I, I like the idea of underground sensors that indicate how many spaces are available, especially for free and untimed off street car parks if we get them back. But I do understand there's a cost for that technology that needs to come from somewhere, but I personally don't think it should be subsidised with higher parking fees at this point in time, not with this economic climate. That's my two cents. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Spinks. Um, I just want to speak to it. Um, I support that only the first and second points are being put to the vote today um, because we aren't making a decision on paid parking and the existence of or not. This is simply noting the work that's come back to us, which has been great. Um, and I know that is a conversation we will have. It's inevitable that that conversation will be had. And I very much second Councillor Summer's comments around making a decision because there's so many avenues to explore that our parking strategy has waiting to implement um, that is held up by the indecision of this um, conversation going around and around in circles. In terms of the um, what we learnt from the report, I've always seen it as, I always thought the conversation was about, you know, do you want paid parking or not? It's as simple as that. Do you want, everyone on, you know, in the community wants free parking. Why wouldn't they? Of course they do. Um, and then on the other side, council has to pay for it. So council wants it to be paid. It all makes sense. Um, and I came from a space where I, I've seen all the data that says that paid parking from an environmental perspective, it's a, dis a disincentive to come into the CBD and it encourages people to park further away and walk or cycle, which is better for public health. And all of these things that are relevant in a city like London, but just aren't as relevant here. And that's what I've learned. This has been my journey to this moment that all of that data is true and is correct, but it just isn't, doesn't really make sense for British Shepparton. So what it's really come down to for me and what I take away from it today is that ultimately the CBD, the way it's designed, the way it's shaped, all of the history that Councillor Brophy has talked about, has to have time parking. That's the crux, is you have to have time parking because you have to have the, par the workers parking somewhere else. You can't have them taking up the streets um, in front of shops and, and clustering the CBD up. Um, so the ultimate question is, do council, um, because you have to have time parking, you have to have um, parking offices, does council pay for the parking offices or do the users pay for the parking offices? That's what it will come down to. Um, and there's arguments, I think, on both sides. So I think from that, that's what the report has given us to work off. And I think that will be what the conversation comes down to, um, for myself anyway, but I think more broadly, is who will pay for that service? We have a user pay, um, basis that we, we build these things off uh, and not everybody uses the CBD. So should it come out of everybody's rates pocket? But on the other hand, parking's a service, you know, it's free in all the other towns. So really not necessarily a point to my argument, just laying it out on the table, but that's what we took from the report. And I appreciate that it's come down to us, uh, come back to us. And I very much support it's one way or another time to make a decision down the track. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Uh, uh, before we go to the vote, I'll obviously just add some comments around the importance of visitor experience to our CBD. And that, I guess, is where the investment into parking, in my opinion, sits. And we just spoke about it's not ideal to not have a 0%, a 1% or a 1.75%. And it's not ideal that we're not supporting uh, complimentary car parking in the upcoming budget at this point. But rather than look at who pays, because the reality is we are we have a many user pay um, facilities in our community as well, and someone will eventually have to pay down the line. But what are we prepared to invest to offer visitor experience? Because the reality is as soon as someone turns up to our CBD from outside our region, they're greeted with a paid parking fee. And we need to determine whether that's something we want to maintain or we want to provide the ultimate visitation to those people that are coming to our CBD. I'll leave it at that. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Can someone please get Councillor Dobson?
Councillor Dobson. Councillors, we now go to page 78 of the agenda item 12.5, Climate Emergency Action Plan. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor move that as a motion? Councillor Spinks. Mayor Sali, I'd like to move the recommendation to a motion that the council, one, acknowledge the feedback from public consultation and subsequent amendments to the draft plan as attached, and two, adopt our, the Our Climate Safe Future Climate Emergency Action Plan as attached. Spinks, would the council like to second that motion? Councillor Brophy. Thank Councillor you, Spinks. Mayor Sali, I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, I will. Um, before I start, I do just want to make, make mention for the community that um, there was a just ever so slight uh, little hiccup where 2.22 action from the um, plan, it just simply wasn't printed, so it has now been added to it. That is to investigate grants to support positive ESD outcomes in commercial development. So that is now included if you notice a change. Um, so to speak to the Climate Emergency Action Plan, um, our, safe, our climate safe future, this is the end result of so much work that has come before it. Um, we have our climate emergency declaration, our action plan off the back of it. We have our 2030 emissions plan, and now we have our what is essentially our community aspiration plan as well. So this is, we have all the plans that we have ready to start taking action. Um, I'm not going to speak to the, the details of the plan. I'm going to speak a little bit more broadly to um, some of the commentary. There are, are many people who will say we aren't doing enough, that by declaring a climate emergency we should be doing more. And there are many people who will say we are doing too much, that it isn't our job to do it. It's what's our little LGA going to do to impact climate action? Um, and I would argue that our local government area, our municipality, won't stop climate change, but climate change is impacting our community. And that's what this is all about for me. This is, that's the emergency the, in the way that I look at it, is we have an obligation right now to act for our community. And this plan is the collaboration between council and the community on how we can do that how we can protect our community and mitigate against the impacts of climate change. And they're in really practical ways. So I'm going to just read a few out from the um, plan to give examples. So it's things like supporting new industries, local businesses and farmers in trialling innovative climate change solutions. It's developing a circular economy strategy. It's supporting the youth of Greater Shepparton to be informed and act on climate change. It's promoting uh, financial support for energy efficiency, such as environmental upgrade agreements, which means putting solar panels on roofs so that people can reduce their energy costs. Um, it's things like promoting low emission transport, like cycling and walking and public transport, so that um, we're not as impacted by fuel costs and not creating an, as many emissions. It's increasing urban tree canopies so that our streets are cooler and our um, biodiversity can thrive. It's Things like working with partners to enhance flood warning and emergency response so we can protect our community when awful things happen. It's working with our farmers, um, our agriculture sector to uh, look at different initiatives that are emerging and to take advantage of state government programs. It's things that are on the ground impacting people in their homes, in their workplaces, in their lives. It's the way that we keep people cooler in an ever-heating climate. Time, yeah, would you like an extension? Yes, please where we help people to get from one place to another in a way that is less impactful on the environment, but also cheaper to do and a more um, uh, gentler on the environment. The point of the community plan is to say, not say that people have to do it, but to say, look at all these things that we can do that will benefit the environment, they'll benefit the economy, and they will benefit your health and your lifestyles. And this plan is, is all of that work that has been done behind the scenes, so much work, um, to create something that makes sense for our community, for our region, and to say we will do everything we can to protect you against the climate, um, the impacts of climate change, 
It is a climate emergency and this is our response to it. And I'm very proud of this document. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Sali. Um, this area uh, of council can be quite complex. All good and well back in early 2020 as the pandemic hit to declare a climate emergency um, and setting an ambitious target. But the devil is in the detail and the devil is in the doing. And I applaud strongly the sustainability team within council who have taken the necessary steps to formulate an action plan. The 10 steps are actions and they're action words if you look at them, development, appointment, conduct, consider, consultation, all doing words. The action plan will help council and the community to guide the response needed. To take the appropriate, considered and meaningful action to what we need to do to ensure that our children and our children's children have the best possible environmental and sustainable future they can. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, whether you believe in climate change or not, it is abundantly clear that humans are having a negative impact on this planet. Growth for the sake of growth has depleted our natural resources and apparently interrupted weather patterns. And unfortunately, councils play a very large part in enabling this destruction with pretty much everything we do. So the conversations and additions that Councillor Spinks described are laudable, they're great. Clearly a lot of work has gone into the conversations report and I thank the team and participants wholeheartedly for their efforts, they're very passionate clearly. Uh, there's an action included in that report that we review our planning scheme under a climate emergency lens. Um, it's more based on vegetation but um, I think it's a fundamentally important addition to this conversation report. Uh, having a good look at our planning scheme will probably entail facing some pretty uncomfortable truths about how we deal with growth and industry. If this truly is an emergency, we're gonna to have to take action on the big fish, otherwise it's a tokenistic gesture. So I look forward to positive outcomes and watching this document moving forward. But again, I'm really keen to see how we're going to negotiate the planning scheme with outcomes we're told that climate change can't possibly entertain. So those two are polar opposites in my eyes and I'm really interested and keen to get into the nitty gritty of how we're gonna work that out. Because if we can work it out, it's a great model for other councils to follow and um, perhaps we won't be so destructive to the planet. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Dobson. Two points. I'd like to congratulate Council on their tree planting scheme. I think it's 10,000, what, what 100,000 trees uh, to be planted in the municipality. And I think that's a real, um, that's a real plus for this council. And I congratulate the management of our council for doing so. The second point that I'd make is that we are, uh, we have got a, a big row of uh, solar panels on some of our major buildings. And uh, going out to have a look at the solar yards the other day, <coughs> we've noticed out there that, for example, there's a big roof space that could be used for further solar panels. So we could be creating, not only helping the environment, but also, creating some income. So we are doing our bit. I think we're doing more than our bit, but this is just this is just rounding it off a bit more. So uh, I can I congratulate Council on bringing it forward. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Abdullah. Thank you, Mayor Sali. I just want to um, emphasize everything that my fellow councillors, uh, Councillor Dobson and Councillor Spinsley have highlighted and Councillor Brophy. Um, it really um, is so delightful to see that, 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 that declaration of climate emergency in 2020 during the pandemic time was, um, has, has now um, shown us the way uh, where we are uh, heading towards and, and that um, path where not only the council but the whole community is, is keen to collaborate and contribute towards the zero carbon uh, emission plan at the end of the day. That's what we are trying to achieve. And um, so, yeah, so very um, happy to see that uh, council provided a leadership role and, uh, and encouraged and also influenced the community in a very positive way and gave them the opportunity 
to think about <clears throat> all those creative ways and all those simple ways or all those um, significant ways where uh, a difference can be made in terms of um, climate, um, uh, in terms of um, reduced carbon emissions. So this plan that is in, fr in front of us, it's uh, I am by no means, I will call it as a tokenistic plan, um, as Councillor Summer has referred to. I do understand that there are some very um, uh, sort of, so as a part of this plan, everything is considered. There are so many aspects to this plan, and planning scheme is one of them. And because council is already uh, is committed to climate change emergency um, um, and, and to zero carbon emissions, it is a no-brainer that when this conversation is happening, council will play its role. So whether it's about planning scheme, whether it's about tree plantation, whether it's about um, everything else, everything that is included in this plan. So I'm very confident and I am um, I want to congratulate our council staff and also the community um, for working together and coming up with this climate emergency action plan uh, for Greater Shepparton community. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Abdullah. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? I will briefly and obviously back up the fact that it is a very detailed um, document as well, which you know provides a lens across multiple facets of our community. I like the fact that council are uh, willing to support industries that perhaps aren't at the level yet of understanding what they can do within their business uh, and leveraging the opportunities. I'm really big on that as well. You know what, what's going to come from higher levels of government and how we can leverage that and support our businesses with their growth. I also do have to mention that we have to be careful how hard we push on this because I would just leave it out there in the open to suggest that perhaps the the movement that is going on and whether that's contributing to the higher cost of living, is the infrastructure there, is the technology there yet, we have to be mindful how hard we push and the, the change that will come, no doubt. But it's all about opportunities. We'll wait and see what comes, but I, I think we just need, I'm just gonna leave it out there and, and let you guys decide whether you think it's having an impact on our latest um, increase in living. So we will now go to the vote. Uh, those in, uh, yeah, those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. <laughs> Councillors, we now go to agenda item 12.6 on page 90 of the agenda, and that's strategic cycling corridors. Shepparton and Railway Station to the Greater Shepparton and Secondary College and Victoria Park Lake. Councillors, there is a recommendation. Can I have someone please put that forward as a motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'd like to move that the Council receive and note the conversation report, Strategic Cycling Corridors, June 2022, summarising the con consultation process associated with the realisation of strategic cycling corridors, linking the Shepparton Railway Station to the Victoria Park Lake and the Greater Shepparton Secondary College. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? Thanks, Councillor Summer. Would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mayor Sally. Another great conversation report. Uh, these conversations are enormously important. They, um, it will facilitate cycling. It will direct the kind of infrastructure that we need to promote cycling. Public and durable cycling infrastructure along the most direct route from A to B will demonstrate this council's commitment to cycling and encourage more use. We are flat, it's perfect terrain. Uh, the more visible cyclists are, the more this city will normalise cycling as a legitimate form of travel, saving money and being healthy. In short, more cycling begets more cycling. <laughs> so I will point out though that we've managed to produce this conversation report, but we still haven't seen feedback from the dirt bike consultation only to illustrate that not all cycling is touring and leisure. Um, yeah, so overall, cycling's great for our bodies, our minds and our planet, so I'm more than in favour of the conversation report. <laughs> so, my Councillor Sphinx, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you. Uh, yeah, um, very excited to see this part of the um, strategic cycling corridors uh, so close to coming to life. I'm a massive advocate for... Um, uh, active transport, walking and cycling. It comes up in every consultation that we do as something that our community needs. And while we have really incredible shared path networks, we have beautiful riverside, you know, recreational walking paths. Um, what we really lack is the direct lines. If someone wants to get, you know, on their bike or they want to walk out their front door and they want to walk to work, how do they do that in a direct, safe, um, a direct and safe way? Uh, the larger strategic cycling corridors um, 
has there's still more linkages to explore, and I look forward to us following up uh, or continuing with those designs because they're going to tap into things like uh, down Archer Street, which if you think about things like there's an awful lot of kids who are catching the bus suddenly to go into a school that's in the middle of town, this could be the difference between them being able to ride a bike to school again. Um, it's the, a safe way to know that your kids can get from A to B um, without being trying to play with traffic at the same time. So the key to getting people uh, onto their bikes and um, out the door is to make it safe. It's fine for the um, the pro cyclers that are happy to get out there and um, risk their life, I suppose, um, and they know what they're doing. Uh, and it's fine to you know ride around the footpaths with your kids, but I'm one of, personally, I will not ride on the roads. I do not find it safe. I do not want to know what I'm doing. I need a safe space. I want to do it. I'm ready to do it, but I do not feel like we have the infrastructure. These corridors are the gap. This is what gets people doing it. So I'm really excited to see these first couple happening. They are funded by uh, the Vic government. So thankfully they're quite expensive. So we're not actually paying for this one, but I look forward to us investigating the remainder of the corridor so that we can become a cycling, um, a cycling municipality, a cycling town, um, you know, expand it out to the other towns as well. It's great, more cycling. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Sphinx. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Abdullah. Thank you. Um, I think, um, yes, I fully agree with uh, what my fellow councillors have just uh, said about, uh, cycle, about the benefits of cycle-friendly uh, um, space. And uh, it's a no-brainer that the pedestrian and cycle uh, friendliness of a town with connected walking and cycling paths has has so many benefits. It encourages active transport, it reduces dependency on cars, it brings positive environmental uh, impacts, helps health and well-being, and of course the overall um, enhanced, re uh, enhanced livability of the region. So I'm very excited about this uh, strategic, uh, strategic cycling corridor. I just want to highlight that the feedback from this consultation of the draft um, strategic <coughs> cycling corridor will help us finalize the design of the design of this corridor and uh, and it will also help us um, you know, use this information for funding advocacy with the state government. Thanks to all the 12 submitters who had uh, provided some useful comments and the concept design will now be updated to include landscaping and uh, lighting around the strategic um, uh, cycling corridor in Shepparton. So we are looking forward to the implementation of the plan, which will undoubtedly provide an enhanced pedestrian and cycling uh, experience in Shepparton. We're very excited about it. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Brophy. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Uh, again, uh, these cycling corridors present an opportunity to make cycling safer, more available, and accessible for, uh, for the community. I wholeheartedly support this. And each design, though, does need to be very careful about the um, in and around the intersections. And I have seen some concerns about some intersections and to be able to, you know, work in and around those, is, you know, once that's been done, you know, to get the best results for safety, I'm absolutely all for everything in regards to the cycling around the, the, the town. As I said, we've got the topography, we've got the people, we've got the climate, let's do it. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? No, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried and opposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 12.7 on page 95 of the agenda, which is the proposed sale of land, 45 Parkside Drive, Shepparton, affordable housing proposal. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor please put that forward as a motion? Councillor Sphinx. Thank you, Mayor Sali. I'm going to read this out in full, so bear with me. It's a little bit long um, because it isn't the same as what's on the screen. Uh, I would like to move as a motion that the council one, note the conclusion of the community engagement process, which was conducted under section 114 of the Local Government Act 2020. Two, receive and note the attached conversation report, proposed sale of part of the land at Parkside Drive, Shepherd and June 2022, summarising all submissions received or heard in relation to the proposed sale of land at 45 Parkside Drive, Shepherd and Three, sell part of the land at 45 Parkside Drive, Shepparton to Women's, House, Women's Housing Limited to facilitate affordable housing. Four, authorise the Chief Executive Officer to do all things necessary to complete the transaction with Women's Housing Limited. 
Five, note that any development on the land will be subject to a future planning process at which time the matter or further community engagement will be addressed as part of that process. Six, include in the memorandum of understanding a requirement for a management framework that outlines the standards, policies and procedures to support the tenants, support the management of the building and support the community. This will include, but is not limited to, tenant and housing services, such as eligibility, allocation and termination of assistance, housing service standards, tenant and resident engagement, access to support for applicants and tenants with support needs, complaints and appeals, housing asset management, such as property condition and maintenance, community engagement, including contributing to socially inclusive communities, governance, such as compliance with legal requirements and government policies, Seven, include in the memorandum of understanding a requirement for local content and procurement, procurement. And point eight, undertake and return to council a feasibility assessment for the development of the remaining stages of Parkside Gardens Estate within the next 12 months, including but not limited to the development of the remaining 45 house lots, provision of adequate lighting throughout the estate, provision of play space and open space, and safety concerns identified by the single point of entry to the estate. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Would a councillor like to second that motion? Councillor Duluth. Councillor, yeah. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you. I have found this to be a very challenging decision. Firstly, I would like to thank the Shepherd and North community for inviting the councillors out to hear your views. It was really important to better understand your experiences and feelings, and I greatly appreciate so many of you sharing your time with us. From my perspective, there are two sides to this proposal. On the one, the desperate need for social affordable housing. On the other, a community that has been treated unfairly and is still experiencing and recovering from so much trauma. I'll unpack both from my perspective and then explain where I stand. The first, the need for affordable housing and for this cohort specifically. The Parkside proposal is for 45 houses to be built, providing homes for women and children who have experienced domestic violence and also for women over 55. Greater Shepparton has awfully high levels of domestic violence and it's only getting worse. As well, women over 55 are the fastest growing cohort of homeless. Shepparton has one of the highest rates of homelessness in Victoria, with a wait list that is expanding faster than it can be filled. And as we all saw recently, rent prices in Shepparton have blown way out of affordability and there isn't enough of them anyway. Simply put, too many people need houses that simply don't exist. The need is clear. But the second is the existing community and the history of Parkside. The history of the social housing experiment that Shep North experienced cannot be ignored. 200 houses spread through a small area with residents who had complex needs and little to no support. It was a recipe for disaster, and while much work has been done to undo the damage, the trauma continues. As well, the residents of Parkside were promised a thriving estate with a family-friendly community, leading sustainability design, and an all-round charming neighbourhood, and they were abandoned. Understandably, they are filled with fear and apprehension that they are watching history repeat itself. These are the two sides, and both are so very important. And to support this proposal, I argue that we have to make sure both are winners. So let me unpack what we've learnt. The first is that regardless of this proposal, uh, in my opinion, we've uncovered a community in need. That estate needs to be finished, their lighting and single point of entry need to be addressed, and they need playgrounds and green space. They deserve what they signed up for, and so I am making sure that this, through this process we can make this happen. The next is that since the Vic Urban Social Experiment, we have all learnt so much. The proponents, Women's Housing Limited, is a registered house, housing provider and have a proven track record of providing well-supported housing. The condensed housing model allows them to best manage the properties and provide support to the residents. This will not be a whole bunch of houses built and abandoned, and we are building it into the MOU to make sure <laughs> of it. To the, future re re uh, to the future residents, there has been so many misconceptions of who these people will be. Can I promise that there will be no instances of domestic violence in the estate? No but I can't promise that for any of the existing houses either. This is not a crisis centre. This is for women who have left and are ready to start putting their lives together, to give their children a home and a community. Not having a home, not having options, is the number one reason women go back to abusive partners. This will not be a space for women to attract violence. Time. Yes, please. Granted. This will not be a space for women to attract violence. It will be a place for them to rebuild. And not forgetting that it isn't just one kind of person living in these homes. Women over 55 will also be housed within the estate. It will be a diverse range of people, experiences and perspectives. And the thing they have in common is that they will finally have a place to call home. And so between these learnings, I am happy to support this proposal. 
because from this opportunity, what we can achieve is bringing life and community to the estate and to create a neighbourhood in a way that was promised and that is needed. And to safeguard this, I am building it into the motion. I am supporting this proposal under the condition that there is a management framework that outlines the standard policies and procedures to support the tenants, the management of the building and the community, and that Council will undertake an immediate feasibility assessment for the development of the remaining stages of Parkside Gardens Estate, including but not limited to the development of the remaining 45 house lots, provision of adequate lighting throughout the estate, provision of play space and open space, and safety concerns identified by the single point of entry to the estate. We need social housing and we need to support this community. Let's see it all happen together. Thanks. Councillor Abdullah, I'd like to speak the motion. Thank you very much. Um, I echo, echo Councillor Sphinx's um, sentiments and I think I'll be repeating a lot of things. Nevertheless, here I go. I support this motion and uh, Women's Housing's proposal to build approximately 45 houses for women in need of affordable housing. And my reasons are based on a range of objective information, research and data, as well as the community feedback. This land is within the general residential zone and is the vacant lot that has been identified as suitable for residential development with the Parkside Gardens um, estate. Now, the context of this matter is important. Councillor Sphinx has already highlighted that the context is that Shepparton has an above state average uh, of rate of homelessness. Shepparton also has a high rate of domestic violence. There is a critical need for housing for women escaping family violence. There were more than 1,600 households on the public housing register in 2019. And in recent times, there has been a continued decline in housing affordability in Shepparton. Currently, there are 500 women on the public housing register and due to their lack of capacity to pay high rents or due to family violence issues, these women need to move into affordable housing units. So where do they find such units in Shepparton? where we don't have enough housing stock diversity and one to two bedroom houses are in short supply. I understand that no single solution type or location will solve this massive problem at hand. So we, we need creative solutions. We need strong partnerships. We need leadership and community support to address the current crisis. And the use of council land is one way in which council can support and achieve real action in addressing the affordable housing crisis. Missing this opportunity can only contribute to a worsening crisis. During the consultation, there were mixed responses. There were supportive comments and there were not so supportive comments. There were objections. There were many valid concerns and fears that were raised. And we can see why those fears and concerns were raised. As Councillor Sphinx has highlighted, uh, poor quality public housing projects and the legacy and stigma of public housing in the Olympic Avenue uh, certainly influence, influence this discussion. And, uh, but the detailed response to the submission is now available in the conversation summary and it explains and I hope it helps alleviate a lot of those concerns. Um, I can refer to uh, perhaps one of the concern which has been repeatedly raised is that of the, of the concern around the clustering of affordable housing. Now, Council has, a, has a, an affordable housing strategy that outlines the preference that uh, community housing or social housing is integrated uh, and with an objective that community housing is not concentrated in any one single location. Tom, can I please? <laughs> Unless, so unless supported by a registered housing agency. So that, so the fact that Women's Housing Limited has an extensive experience supporting this cohort of residents and, uh, and they have delivered award-winning social housing uh, projects and this MOU that has now been uh, included in this motion, uh, I believe there are many safeguards. And um, so that's why I'm satisfied that council will work with Women's Housing and include uh, in the contract, all the conditions to ensure that the ongoing management of the housing, um, uh, this housing is safe and successful for existing and new residents. I also want to highlight that under the big housing bill project, the state government has strongly supported housing agency proposals involving council provided land. So let's not miss the opportunity to provide affordable housing through this project. I'm sure there'll be many more such projects coming our way. We need to be prepared to avail all the possibilities promptly and address the housing crisis and affordable housing issues in Shepparton. 
And as said by many and, this, and the researchers in this field that if it, if it is the right spot for housing, then it is the right spot for affordable housing. So I fully agree and I support this motion. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sali. First, I want to make it clear I have no problem with the facility itself, and I absolutely love what Councillor Spinks had to say. I fully support point eight of the motion. I think that's really important. Uh, personally, I don't think that, that it'll cause any tangible harm, and I also don't think many people would even know it was there. That's not quite the point here, so please don't assume I'm not supportive of the housing model. What I am objecting to is the location. I'm objecting on behalf of long-term residents from Shepparton's North, who, as stated earlier, would be re-traumatised by this development. That area still has not recovered from social housing decisions that were made decades ago. I grew up in Packham Street, so I saw all that. Um, there's still a high concentration of disadvantaged residents and deep stigma for that area of town remains. In fact, that failed government policy of the time could be contributing to so much local resistance towards social housing today. When you think of social housing, you think straight away that area. It didn't work then. At its worst, services and police were reluctant to go to that part of town. Kids weren't allowed to play with other kids who lived there. It did not lead to positive outcomes for residents. If that address was on their resumes, they'd be overlooked but they are slowly rebuilding. That area is gentrifying, but it takes time. After what they've been through, I won't agree to clustered social housing anywhere near them. Perception is reality, and rightly or wrongly, whether it's right or wrong, I believe this proposal could be detrimental to the mental health of the people who live there. In fact, I'd go so far as to suggest an apologetic moratorium be stipulated stipulated that clustered social housing will never be put there again. It's generational trauma. So over the years, council has neglected these people. And only now we've finally placed Curb and Channel down Packham Street. Only now we're learning about promised developments that haven't progressed. The squeaky wheel gets the oil. And I'm sorry to say that many residents are fearful of interacting with council. And that's a failing on our behalf. They haven't spoken up about what they need and they largely haven't spoken up in regards to this proposal. But many passionate objectors were very vocal during a public consultation session held by Councillor Spinks. Without that input, I may be making a different decision today. Point of clarification. Okay. Not held by Councillor Spinks. We were all invited. Ah, uh, what's a good word? Enabled by? <laughs> Oh, it doesn't matter. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, these good people don't deserve to feel abandoned again by, uh, by this council. Um, so while I'm really supportive of point eight, um, there's no guarantee that passing this motion means that point eight would actually be acted on. So um, I'm not willing to re-traumatise these people, regardless of... Um, Summer, where time would you like an extension? No, thank you. That's enough. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Brophy. Thank you, Mayor Sali. Uh, this is a very difficult one, and it has been for all of us. Uh, very difficult in the sense that had the recommendation remained the same, I probably would have gone against it. I do applaud Councillor Spinks in putting together uh, some incredible safeguards uh, that have been put into place. When I look at it, what is the, the pros for this? Uh, obviously, Women's Housing Limited have been tremendous in their briefings to us. Um, and it's about a number of people, a percentage of mature age female residents as well. We can't forget that. And it's women and mothers who are recalibrating their lives. It's not a refuge. It's not an emergency housing. It's a step removed from that. It's a re-establishment of their lives. They need a step up, not a put down. In principle, they will be well supported. I want this to succeed. We as a community need for it to succeed. We are the instruments of catalyst with our decision making. We have a duty and we have moral obligation. There is ambiguity in and around the design, 
uh, and I still haven't got some straight answers about single story and double story and, and that really, and there are, I still haven't many concerns about that. Um, I have listened to all of them, all of the concerns that people have had, and I do not support cluster housing in principle. I want desperately to support this, but with a varied model to what had been put forward to us. And I believe the Councillor Spinks has given us that safeguard and various models that we can actually now develop because I want to see all of the whole, all that division developed. I would rather see instead of clustered to be it spread out, whether it be a percentage. And I think a lot of residents were quite happy to, for that to have happened. So let's, let's go ahead with this. Let's get it moving. Let's see how it can benefit all of the development and the, all of the community there and not be clustered. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Dobson. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Sally, and I'd like to congratulate uh, Councillor Spinks, uh, Councillor Abdullah, uh, and Councillor Brophy on their speaking for, and I'd also like to acknowledge the, the, uh, the, uh, the um, points that Councillor Summer brought up too, because I think they're all relevant, and they're all, part of the mix is why this has been such a traumatic uh, uh, development for us. But uh, there's a couple of things that I find in favour of this development. One is that we're going to look at uh, the developing the balance of the estate. So it's not as if the 45 houses will be out there on their own. We have the ability to put forward some quite stringent controls and and planning around those 45 houses. So I'll be relying on that. A number of the submissions received by council cited concerns about the future management of the properties. And this is what we've been provided with. Women's Housing Limited have noted that they are a registered housing provider which is required to comply with performance standards and other requirements set out in the Housing Act. The performance standards outline the requirements for the provision of a tenancy management plan for community housing, which amongst other things includes a screening of future tenants, allocation of housing, eligibility criteria and assets and income criteria. The tenancy management plan commits the safety of existing adjacent residents and tenants housed by the proposal as a priority as outlined. So I'm taking some comfort in that. Before I just finish, can I just bring this to the attention of the, of the council? That at the moment, in Graham Street. Most of us know there's a, 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 a housing there. Beyond Housing has 20 townhouses that are being developed. Beyond Housing are doing that. Um, also in Graham Street, there's abutting Boucher Street. There's 16 townhouses um, and there are others to come on board. So in that precinct alone, there is a pro approximately 56 properties. Um, 20 are social and 36 are probably private. Down in St George's Road, there are 29 townhouses, a number of which have been allocated for public housing. In, nine River, in 11 Buckworth Street, near the Coles Kyala, there is an approved for 18 social housing townhouses. Nine Riverview Drive, the corner of Riverview Drive and Buckworth, there are five townhouses. The total number in this precinct is 23 social housing, uh, social housing townhouses. At 25 Caspian in Riverview Estate, River Wood Estate, there's nine social housing townhouses. At 132 Vaughan, opposite Carabock Park, there are six townhouses. Winteringham at the moment at 48 to 60 have 32 one bedroom and four two bedroom. And at 57 Wyndham, there's 28 one bedrooms on the first level, along with 20. I'm Councillor Dobson. So I'd like to just finish, thank you. Good and a 20 bed residential aged care facility. So what we're seeing is scattered around the municipality, scattered around the city of Shevlin, there are differing, uh, a, a differing aspects or differing styles uh, of social housing, affordable housing that's on, the, that's on the go already. So what we're proposing there at 45 Parkside Drive is just the same, taking into consideration the, the, the requirements and the concerns of the residents are there, and I think your proposal has put that uh, in perspective. So I do support this. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillors, I will speak against this motion. Look, 
everything makes so much sense and I commend Councillor Sphinx with those couple of additional items, absolutely. I mean, that's what was lacking and I commend you for putting that forward. But Councillor Summer highlighted uh, a stigma that is probably still there in the north and it, and it still exists, unfortunately. And I think that if we go down the path of supporting clustered living where we have a control around the decision that we will effectively be repeating history. And that is a concern that sits with me at the moment. We're talking about 45 dwellings of a possible 90 that would be available at that site there. We've spoken about the ability to spread them out. It's not possible from my understanding, you know, how far we can go from that. And I'm happy to be corrected on that. But I feel that once we support this, we will, we will have 45 dwellings in one area and in hope of having the things that Councillor Summer, uh, I'm sorry, Councillor Spinks has put forward addressed into the future for, for their, their own part if this does get up. But repeating history scares me a little bit because we're here to make decisions and generational decisions and I don't think I'm comfortable with making this decision right now that in time could come back to haunt me and the reality is I'm happy to be proved wrong but at the moment I can't support it. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. Oh, you're right to reply. Thank you, Councillor Spinks, right to reply. Thank you. Just to a couple of points that were raised. Um, it, uh, just quickly to the point of um, clustering and the fact that it's happening all around us. Um, it's, you know, it's not 200 units, it is 45, which I know is still a lot in Shepparton and in regional Victoria. Um, but the reality is it is happening all around us. The reason it's under such heavy public scrutiny is because it is council land. There are so many that are already going up without anybody even realising, which is a great thing because there's no stigma when you don't know who lives in these spaces. Um, and the reality is, and everybody around this table knows, that there just isn't the capacity for land to do the to spread them out. We have to take advantage of what land is available to us, and that is what this proposal has done. Um, and that is the reason that it is the it looks like what it looks like right now. Um, the other one thing I want to speak to is Councillor Summers' comments around the estate being forgotten. You're like everything you said is absolutely right. It should absolutely be something we're considering and we're aware of. My argument would be that that's what we can do right now. That's our opportunity to make sure that estate is now on the radar and that we do not let it fall off again, that we have an opportunity to not only benefit these residents, but also to benefit these new homeowners, you know, that will come into, not owners, but these new houses that will come in as well. Um, the final comment I will make around stigma being raised, this opportunity, um, we know we have community in need, and tonight, this opportunity is in our grasp. It's right here. We can either grab it or we can let it go. And ultimately, yes, stigma exists. It's real and it's absolutely a factor. But do we let the people stigmatising win or do we put people in homes? That's my decision tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Those against? Carried. Division, please. Thank you. Councillor, we'll now do the vote again. All those in favour? Councillor Abdullah, Councillor Dobson, Councillor Brophy, Councillor Spinks, Councillor James. Those against? Councillor Summer, Councillor Sarley. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 12.8 on page 105 of the agenda, which is sale of land at 5 Edwards. 115121 Maud Street and 92 Nixon Street, Shepparton, affordable housing proposal. Councillor James. Just want to highlight, Councillor James, you've got a conflict. Yep, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> got that? <laughs> um, Councillors, there is a recommendation. Can I please have someone put that forward as a motion? Councillor Abdullah. Thank you. I would like to move the recommendation on page 105 um, as a motion. And it says that the council, number one, note the conclusion of the community engagement process, which was conducted under section 114 of the Local Government Act 2020. Number two, receive and note the conversation report, proposed sale of the Mort Nixon and Edward Scarpa, Shepparton, June 2020, 2022, Summarising all submissions received or heard in relation to the proposed sale of land at 5 Edward Street, 115-121 Mott Street and 92 Nixon Street, Shepparton. 
Number three, sell the land for $1 at 5 Edward Street, 115-121 Mott Street, and 92 Nixon Street, Shepparton, to Beyond Housing and Wintrigam to realize social housing. Number four, note that, note that the ground floor car park will be returned to council ownership on completion of construction. Number five, authorizes and directs the chief executive officer to do all things necessary to complete the transactions with Beyond Housing and Pintrigan. Number six, uh, I think I will, uh, I will not read the rest of the stuff. It, they are indeed included in my motion, but as, um, uh, so the motion includes all items that are included in the recommendation. But I just wanted to highlight uh, first five. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Can I have a Councillor second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillor Abdul, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you. So today I urge everyone to read the full report in this agenda uh, report to clearly understand why council officers recommend the approval of this sale and why I am supporting this motion. It is impossible to summarize all the information that the council staff has communicated to us in the past few months in, the man, in a marathon of briefing sessions and reports and emails, etc. As your counsellor, I must carefully consider all the facts, objective information, evidence and community feedback to make the right decision that is in the best interest of the broader community and not only for one specific section of the community. I also realise that the right decision may not be the most popular. In doing so, my decision must also align with my values of social justice, empathy, and courageous leadership. So I ask everyone to respect the decision that all councillors have to make today in this complex matter. I also ask everyone to respect the professionalism of the council staff who only do their duty in providing the information, data, and evidence needed to make an objective decision. I want to assure everyone that I have listened to all sides of the argument. On the one hand, I listened to the concerns in the 700 plus submissions and the strong voices objecting to the proposal but not denying the need for social housing in Shepparton. And on the other hand, I've also heard the community who didn't have a voice, the voice of 1,600 plus households who are currently on the public housing register in Shepparton. On the one hand, I heard that this project has caused so much angst in the community, so we must look for alternative sites. And on the other hand, I also looked at the youth foyer, the cottage rehab center, and the skate state park in, park in Shepparton, with similar history of community dissent. But now, their positive outcomes are hard to ignore. So overall, I'm comfortable that through the MOU conditions and safeguards, most of the concerns raised uh, that have been raised can be addressed. In particular, the concern that the school and the social housing project can coexist, just like in many other places elsewhere. We know that the disturbance and inconveniences to the school during the construction phase can be addressed through the construction management plan. But I also acknowledge that some inconvenience will remain, which should not be the reason to cancel this project. If so, nothing can ever be built anywhere. To those questioning whether it's a good commercial decision or not, I invite them to think about the enormous social benefits of the decision. And it is not the first time. time. Yes, Sanction yes, granted. Yes, and it is not the first time that council will be making a seemingly poor commercial decision in the interest of more significant social and community benefits. <laughs> Sam at the $1 peppercorn lease was one such decision. And the evidence of its positive social and community benefits are in front of us. So I, I, I invite everyone to walk in the shoes of those experiencing homelessness and hear the voice, their voice on this proposal. Today, I invite everyone to imagine a place in the CBD where households needing social housing have a roof over their heads. Imagine that they are welcomed to live in the center of the town where services, shops, bus stops, schools are within walking distance. Imagine 
that their stigma of living in social housing is no more because the community supports them, welcomes them, and makes space for them in line with the principles of inclusion and social justice. Imagine that the project goes ahead because the community understands that we often don't have a perfect solution and we all have to make adjustments and show empathy and patience to live in harmony with others. Refusing this proposal will in no way address the stigma around social housing. Instead, it will only perpetuate this stigma. And we can be better than that. Shepparton can be better than that and be a kind and welcoming place with a sense of pride for all residents, including the residents of social housing. Council has long been blamed for not doing enough for homelessness in Shepparton. And let's, let's also not forget that the council's strategic plan says, let's leave no one behind. So now is the time to demonstrate that council is serious about taking meaningful actions in addressing this issue. We now need to walk the talk. In the words of Voltaire, don't let perfect to be the enemy of good. While waiting for a perfect solution, we lose time and opportunity to make a good decision. So in concluding, I urge my fellow councillors to show positivity and leadership to support this motion, motion and make a good and a right decision. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, I would. When all of this started, I said that I was supportive, but not blindly supportive. I've also always maintained that I would listen openly and objectively to all concerns, and if they could not be addressed, adapted to, or removed, then I would not support the proposal. But after all of this time and all of the submissions, reports, and conversations, there have been no deal breakers. And so here we are. Now, six minutes is simply not long enough to let me speak to every one of the concerns that have been raised, but let me explain how many have been heard and addressed so far. The design has been greatly modified in direct response to the community consultation and feedback. Changes so far include opening up the car park to be higher, more visible and well lit, setting back the fourth storey well beyond the required distance and removing the fourth storey from the majority of the Maud Nixon intersection, allowing for as much light and view to be retained for ACE and to remove as much shadowing as possible. And while the side driveway gate is not a legally recognised fire access, nonetheless they have retained and included it within the design to continue providing access through the car park. And as well they have created voids in the spaces adjacent to the school's courtyard to address any concerns about views in or out for both the school and for the residents, as well as for the properties adjacent to the building on Edward and Nixon Streets. The proponents want to make sure this works and to work with community to get the design right. It is still not and it is still not finalised and will need to go through further permit and design process, which will have another round of community consultation and opportunity for community to contribute their ideas. As mentioned within the submissions, the proposal can proceed without impacting ACE through good design, tenant selection and maintenance, and this has been built into the recommendation tonight to make sure of it. Another recurring point raised was the idea of alternative loca locations being more appropriate, and it has also been addressed. An audit was completed of the proposed alternative sites that evaluated the best suited using criteria of ownership, value and amenity, site characteristics and planning, location amenities and transport, and financial feasibility and development delivery timing. Of the 16 sites evaluated, the Nixon Maud site was the most appropriate location. This both supports the appropriateness of the proposal today and also supports Council to look at more sites potentially being developed in future, not instead of, but as well as. What the community asked for, we have done, and the results support this proposal not, being, not only um, being the right location, but the best location. Now, I've made sure to sort through all of the information and address the genuine concerns, but I also want to briefly speak to the stereotyping and prejudice that we have seen play out. On a lighter note, the recurring theme of a lack of green space and apartments not being suitable homes. I find that these all come from a place of unconscious bias. We think everyone wants what we have, but the reality is not everybody wants a house with a backyard. For some, the idea of a really low maintenance, small space they can call their own is more than enough. Apartment living is absolutely perfect for some. On a darker note, there has been a clear narrative that these people are broke, deviants, perverts, and it has been heartbreaking to watch. Oh, yes, please. Granted. These people are us. And as housing gets more expensive and more unattainable, it's going to be more and more of us. 
This has been such a disappointing moment when the most affluent among us could have chosen to wrap their support around those in need and instead use their resources and influence to try and push them away. And this same discourse has played out before for the Rumbalara Elders Facility, for the foyer and for ACE itself. And none of their fears came true, not one. Mm. So considering that all of the concerns raised are being addressed, that ACE will be considered and protected, and that we know the worst fears never actually come true, let's talk about the site itself. Using the car park airspace to build apartments is awesome. Shepparton is growing and changing, and this proposal fills so many gaps. Increasing density, increasing housing diversity, innovatively using space. We have spent so much money on the CBD, and now it's time to fill it with people. The CBD has such amazing amenity with everything within an 800 metre walk. More people moving around increases safety and a sense of community. Affordable housing means disposable income available to spend on coffees and homewares and dinners. To also clarify, this is not high rise and this is not high density. This is medium everything at best. We are a growing regional city and our diverse people need diverse housing and diverse lifestyles. We know there is a dire need for one and two bedroom homes and the need to use airspace is simple. Our CBD is filled to its boundaries. We have to go up, which means a medium apartment complex like this makes absolute sense. And ultimately, I would argue that supporting this project is to the benefit of all community, because when we support the basic needs of all people, they have the opportunity to be positive contributing community members. And having a home is the very first basic need for everything good that comes after. As we all know, there's no place like home. To vote against this proposal would mean to either argue against medium rise development, which stifles future development opportunities and works directly against filling our clear lack in housing diversity, or to vote against social housing, which sends a clear message that those people are not welcome in the CBD and that the CBD is not in fact for everyone. And if all of this has not been convincing enough, then I will leave you with these closing comments. It is arrogant to demand perfection. These community members do not have the luxury of perfection. They do not have the luxury of time. They cannot simply go home and wait for us to get it 100% right. And even if we build every one of these proposals, the waiting list will still go backwards. We need every home we can get and we need them right now. So tonight, please support this with me. Thank you. Councillor Spinks, are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Councillor Brophy. Thank you, Mayor Saleh. Can I first say to Councillor Abdullah and Councillor Spinks, incredibly supporting speeches. Well done. This should have been about the sale of airspace over a public car park, full stop. But it's far more complex than that. I did not support the in principle proposal back in December. Again, I will reiterate that we need these type of projects but we need them to be successful. And I encourage inner city living, and I, I, I still support that. I want more proposals to be brought forward to us because there is an appetite to do that, that they just have to be the right ones. Every one of us may find ourselves in public housing at some stage. Everyone that's sitting in that gallery now, could be one, you could be next week or the week after. Land is short. There's shortage in land, in housing, and there's also shortage in everything from social housing, affordable housing to executive housing. Just ask the real estate agents in the area. I've been fairly critical of the process. You know, six months is a ridiculous amount of time to have had this. This should have been resolved two months ago. It is unfair to the council officers. It's been hanging over the heads of the proponents, of the residents, of the local traders, of Ace College, Enough time was given. Perhaps if more time had been given in the lead up and the analysis prior to going out to initial recommendation in December, then we would have been better prepared. Can I say to Whittingham and Beyond Housing are incredible organisations. And this, in, in my view, does not diminish our relationship, goodwill or their sound reputation. I grew up in social in, in housing commission in Shepparton and I have lived in a more affluent area that has social housing as a property within the streets. So I do know what I'm talking about in regards to this. I have listened to, I have listened to those who have, an un, who, who have an understanding and in my opinion are very prominent people such as Patricia Moran, other social workers, law enforcement officers, 
those who are professionals in the social housing, and more importantly, I've referenced it against the council's very own affordable housing strategy. None support the cluster model. There will be, however, on rare opportunities for this to be presented and, and could possibly work a, cloud, a cluster housing situation. I do not see this in this particular case. <clears throat> The affordable housing strategy is developed Time. in part. Councillor Brophy, would you like an extension? Yes, thank you. Granted. In part, as a blueprint to move forward and to, and to learn from previous past mistakes. <coughs> this has raised the issue to have, this, ha this has raised the issue we have in Greater Shepparton of the need for affordable housing. It has put it squarely on the agenda for all of us to do something about. We have heard from a lot of some very prominent Shepherdtonians over the past six months, and I applaud, I applaud their, their statements and their resolve to be the movers and shakers in this space. Many are in the construction industry and can do something about the crisis that we have. So I look forward to their valuable input. And to those who have intimidated our council officers who are just doing their job, if that's you sitting in the gallery or watching from uh, this live stream, have a good hard look at yourself. It's not acceptable in any form. Vehemently disagree and object, but do so in an appropriate manner. Councillors do this. We do not argue, uh, we do not agree on a lot of issues, issues that do affect people, but we also have a little thing that we call mutual and genuine respect. Ace College, <coughs> Council supported strongly and financially the relocation of the college, and correctly. It's been a bit rich now to say points and flaws at the particular process of ACE College and some of the access points, etc. Having worked as a student uh, wellbeing officer, I have first-hand understanding of the need to have students to have access to fresh air, natural light, and an open design plan. This promotes the basis of better educational outcomes. And lastly, as I get to it, lastly, I know each and every councillor has had many <coughs> sleepless nights, considered deliberations, had uh, each read each single submission, listened to each face-to-face -face public hearing, contemplated each council briefing, attended on-site visits, and spoken to residents, retailers, educators, <coughs> proponents, and the wider public, as have I. At this point in time, I cannot support the current recommendation brought before us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the recommendation? Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the recommendation? Councillor Dobson. Um, um, firstly, I'd like to uh, congratulate Councillor Spinks, Councillor Abdullah, Councillor Brophy, uh, and all the councillors. And I think to the gallery, you can see by the depth of thought that's gone into these presentations that we haven't done this lightly. Sleepless nights would be an understatement. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the 750 plus residents who voiced their opinions on the proposed development. I also note that the council did not receive one opinion from the 1,650 households who would be applicants for residence in this complex. And that probably goes to the point that my colleagues have been talking about. Can I also acknowledge the power of work done by our management, Peter, um, in bringing <coughs> to the table information over the last six months. The Victorian government has allocated $45 million to assist that. <coughs> Sorry. Just want a moment, Councillor Dobson? I'll, I'll, I won't go on. Okay. I'll, I'll wait a minute. Okay. I'm sorry, it's very emotional. Mm -hmm. you, Councillor Dobson. Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? <clears throat> Councillor Summer. Uh, thank you, Mayor Farley. I'm speaking to the motion. Oh, I've written so many 
words for or against got about four or five different speeches i've just put together my personal thoughts i want to see hands in the air before i make a decision i've listened to everyone uh, i personally think it's a great idea but i'm not an authority i'm mindful that i represent the broader community i hope this fits in six minutes um, look, if I'd known we would direct so, so much time and resources into the first proposal to grace the council table, I probably would not have agreed to proceed with the MOU. At that point, I believed it was a conversation that could break down social stigma and raise awareness about the growing risk of homelessness. However, I did not expect the depth of prejudice towards people in need by this community. It has been harrowing to watch. For social housing to succeed, it needs some degree of community buy-in. And that was glaringly absent from 700 submissions. Look, I actually think it's a great location, but the stigma directed towards these people who will live in that building through no fault of their own, that stigma could hold those people back. It's not coming from them. Depending on perspective, this building could be a building of opportunity. As a community, we could respect people trying to rebuild their lives, offer them a warm welcome, because for many, this is a step up from their current reality, and it's something Greater Shepparton should actually be very proud of. Most just need their own space to store belongings, make a cup of coffee, and turn a key in their own door for some security. And it's very difficult to contribute to society without clean clothes or a shower, so it compounds poverty, not having a home. Bloody obvious. <laughs> but traditionally, disadvantaged Australians have been stigmatised, abused, exploited and punished for circumstances outside their control. It seems to be a residual hangover from convict times. We now know that people are not poor because they deserve it or did anything wrong. We are simply products of our environment. If you were born poor, you're statistically more likely to stay poor, and it's the same if you're born wealthy. But every one of these people are born with talents. So when we assist the disadvantaged, no skills are wasted. We all benefit. The reality is that rent is unaffordable. We already have over 1,600 people on our social housing waiting list, and that number is growing. News reports describe 100 applicants for every rental property. We, we know Shepparton has one of the highest population of people at risk of homelessness in all of Victoria. Council secured $45 million from the state's big build grant to provide housing. If we don't use it, we will lose it. In that regard, we might need to become way more accepting. Extinction. Yes, please, Kelly. Granted. We might need to become way more accepting of this very quickly because the alternative is people in sleeping bags in front of businesses. You cannot ignore the lower class out of existence. They have just as much right to CBD living as the rest of us. We're only ever as strong as our weakest link and I hope future applications will be met with a lot more compassion than what we've seen. Ugh. Council can assist by improving its consultation process. ACE was not consulted or even included in the proposed designs, which was a significant oversight. Remove all other concerns and it's still clear ACE students would be significantly impacted by construction alone. Usually the risk of construction is to be expected in the CBD area, but Council only recently moved ACE there. And I don't think that's very fair. And as mentioned, we've heard from people who have homes, we've heard from ACE, we've heard from service providers and from consultants, but we've hardly heard from people likely to use this housing. We need to get a lot more creative in making applications more palatable for the community if we're going to get this over the line. So I think in a perfect world, it could be a great building, but we don't live in a perfect world. And this has been the hardest decision I've ever had to make on this council. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Can I go again? Councillor Dobson, I was going to offer you the opportunity to resume. Thank you. <clears throat> the Victorian Government has allocated $45 million to assist the housing of singles, couples and families who cannot afford to purchase or rent in the commercial real estate world. This program is being rolled out in many metropolitan and regional areas and is gathering momentum by the day. I read a report, for example, today in Queensland where a council up there has allocated tens of thousands, millions of dollars, in fact. J 
Geelong, for example, has been on this path for many years with the assistance of philanthropic and community groups. Wangaratta has recently announced that it's demolishing ground floor uh, public housing to construct four storeys of affordable housing. Familiar story. There are three elements <coughs> to the equation. The state government for the funding, Greater Shepparton City Council for, for suggesting suitable land or airspace free of charge and registered service providers to allocate and manage the residents. So who are the existing Shepparton residents who are eligible for a home for home designated as affordable housing? There are many, but specifically include in this operation um, 50 plus aged couples or singles, mainly in one bedroom apartments. There's going to be, there would be 15. Local under rent, people who are locals who are under stress in the community in a mix of one and two bedroom home. In a typical development such as the one under, under, under consideration, renters from both providers are matched uh, with housing that suits the way they want to live. It is to be noted that only successful applicants who fulfil the renting criteria will be offered an apartment and those applicants must complete a res residential tenancy agreement with the service provider. Service providers have also indicated that locations central to retail health and community health, employment and recreation facilities will be important. Service, providers on service provider ongoing engagement with residents would include dedicated project and community li liaison workers the establishment of a community liaison group, community and neighbourhood engagement activities. All of the reports that we've received indicate that the Nixon Maud Street car park airspace fits all of the above criteria perfectly. However, the wider community does not see the location of the proposed project compatible at, as the preferred location. There are models Every person opposing the project started their conversation with council with the words, I support the provision of community housing. Therefore, I now put this challenge to the community members who oppose the preferred location. Let our community look beyond government and local government constraints in finding suitable housing land stocks by forming a community philanthropic group to assist state and local government in the provision of housing for those in stressed households. I thank you. I would like some more time. Granted. I call upon developers, investors, business leaders, community leaders to join with council and the state government to source and fund suitable land that I outlined in the criteria above. The land would include privately owned land in addition to local and state government land. In addition, private funding would be essential. There are models around to which to base the business plan and I refer to the Geelong model headed by the Costa Group as, as, uh, as a start. And I've spoken to the Costa Group, and it's a very good model. We need ongoing land supply stream that can be accessed at short notice for the provision of affordable housing. <clears throat> the community group would not include those who wish to make a profit on the needs of others, but would include those who have a social conscience strong enough to be involved. In other words, if the proposal is not successful, then we can have a plan that this community that has community acceptance, strategic location properly funded from the private sector and government working in partnership. All sites are and will be supported by Shepparton based tenancy and support staff, going back to the model. More than ever, our community must stand with council, the state government and service providers to look after vulnerable households, some of whom may be your neighbours, your friends or acquaintances. And I call upon those who have said in the objections, we stand for affordable housing to now step up to the table. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Are there, well, no, actually, because everyone has their, their opportunity. I will speak against this motion, but I just want to put that to one side for now. And I'll just, I got elected mayor 10 days ago, and I just want to share a bit of context around what's taken place, but not look for any sympathy. We can see that it's very emotional, right? And it's, it's important that you understand that this is a challenging job at times. Obviously, I want to thank the staff with what they've gone through as well. It's been stressful and, and brutal at times. 800 submissions, near enough to 800 submissions. Uh, yesterday, uh, from early in the morning till this afternoon, I had 28 phone calls regarding this matter. Uh, answered them all and, and worked through the challenges that are in front of us. We've considered this 
Um, I've considered this, and the reason why I can't support it is for a number of reasons, and, and basically I've, I've focused on where I want to see the vision of our CBD and highlight the fact of the decision that is laying with us is the sale of the airspace and the airspace only. And with that decision, it's a generational decision. I highlighted it before, and I can't be remembered at this point for making a decision that I'm not comfortable with, so I cannot support this proposal. I will now go to Councillor Abdullah for your right of reply. Thank you, Mayor Sali. Uh, look, uh, it was good to hear from everyone, and I think everybody could say more than what they, they were, were allowed to say in this limited time. So I thank everyone for their very candid and heartfelt comments. It has been a very difficult process, no doubt, but some of the comments that were made uh, um, in this conversation um, are where I feel that I can uh, sort of, I should be um, presenting a, 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 count, a response. One of the things was about the time, maybe Councillor uh, Brophy, you mentioned that this should have been done two months earlier, and there is a perception out there in the community that why did Council take so long? So um, the reality is that with this, with these 700 plus submissions, um, those, and we are very thankful to all the submitters for raising and highlighting all the concerns. There were so many concerns from uh, from uh, a section of community and uh, who needed the, who, who supported the social housing, uh, the idea of social housing, but they were not comfortable with the location or for any other reasons. So of course there were so many unanswered, unanswered questions in the consultation process that it was crucial to get all the additional information and give the matter its due attention for fair and objective outcomes for the community. And personally speaking, I would not have been able to come to this decision um, or conclusion without having all that information in front of me. So I, again, once again, I thank council staff for doing the hard work and for all the diligence and the due diligence shown in that process. Um, another point was about why we didn't hear from 1,600 um, or so uh, households uh, who are on the housing register. And uh, perhaps there is this uh, perception that just because we have 700, uh, 700 plus have supported, and that means the majority uh, submitters have supported, and that means the project should be, um, I mean, this proposal should be rejected because 700 plus did not support this project. So I think uh, we need to see things in context. Uh, community consultation is a very significant part of council's decision making. And it is not the only consideration because if you are looking at only the numbers, so 700 did not support the idea but there were 1,600 who, were, who are on the housing register who probably do not have the resources, who do not have the time, who do not have the ability to join in this consultation. And yes, Councillor uh, Samar, I take your point that consultation process needs to be improved. This is, uh, this is work in progress. And in all matters, we have said that, that community consultation needs to improve. So the reason that 1,600 were not there and they did not have a voice was uh, because there were challenges. They are living in challenging Sorry. circumstances. Extinction. Yes, please. And, but, but we have organizations like Beyond Housing, like Windham, like so many other community housing um, organizations who are advocating strongly on behalf of them and to give them a voice because they are at the moment voiceless. Um, the other thing was about um, uh, that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, sale of space, there's some concern perhaps that it's not a good idea, the CBD, the, you know, the look, um, or, or the not, it's not, it's not a perfect match. Um, I think I've said that in my initial um, uh, comments that for council, it's not all about commercial gain. We have, we have a responsibility and a duty towards our community to make a balanced decision. Sometimes we are not looking at the financial gains, but we are looking at the social and community benefits. And those benefits are just enormous. And they are, you know, they outweigh any other concerns that are brought up. So that's what I have to say. In the end, I acknowledge that it has been a very, very difficult process. And, um, and I, um, again, thank all the councillors who are doing it. Every decision, every decision that, are, that they're going to make today, I have full um, confidence that they are making with the best of their intention and with the best interest of community in mind. 
So let's not take things, um, let's not become very personal about this matter. We have all given it a, uh, this due consideration. That's all that I would say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Those against? Motion lost. Division, please. With the division, all those in favour? We have Councillor Abdullah, Councillor Sam Spinks, those against? Councillor Summer, Councillor Dobson, Ropi, and Councillor Sali. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 13.1 on 124, page 124 of the agenda, award of contract number 2174. We might just wait. Yeah. Sorry. Five minutes. Nice. We'll just pause. We don't need to adjourn. Give yourself a couple of minutes, councillors, if you want to stand up and stretch your legs. Right. Greg. Greg. Right for you there, mate. Oh. Councillors, we will now go to page 124 of the agenda, item 13.1, award of contract number 2174, panel of supplies, on-site crushing of recycled concrete bricks and shredding of green waste. There is a recommendation. Can I have a council please put forward that as a motion? Yes, I'll move the recommendation that the council accept the tender submitted by Eco One Recycling Centre Proprietary Limited, Triple J Plant Hire, All Stone Quarries and Local Mixed Quarries, authorise the Chief Executive Officer to sign and seal the contract documents and authorise the Chief Executive Officer to award the optional contract extension period. Uh, with permission, yeah, Dobson. Yeah. Mover, would you mind if we insert the contract mm -hmm. number into that recommendation? Contract number. Do we have a contract number? Yeah, we do. We should do it. Can someone provide a copy to yeah. Oh, that one. Oh, sorry, there's another. Yes. Oh, contract number 2174. That's been inserted. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's fine. Do you want me to read that point one again for clarity or not? Please, sir. Accept the tender for award of contract number 2174, panel of supplies, on site crushing. Recycled con concrete bricks and shredding of green waste submitted by Eco One Recycling Centre Proprietary Limited, Triple J Plant Hire, All Stone Quarries and Local Mixed Quarries. Uh, the other two um, recommendations remain the same. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I have a Councillor second that motion? Yes. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, no, I think uh, the motion speaks for itself. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Would you like to speak to the motion? No, hey, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Springs. Are there any councillors against the motion? No, are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 13.2 on page 128 of the agenda, which is award of contract CN2241 Davies Road intersection upgrade. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Happy to move. Thank you, Councillor. Recommendation as a motion as printed on. Page 128. Yeah, well, oh, no, no, sorry, as printed. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll read it out. That the Council of One accept the tender for award of contract CN2241 Davies Road intersection upgrade submitted by Jarvis Delahaye Contractors for contract number 2241 Davies Road intersection upgrade with the total lump sum amount of $745,563.70, including GST. And to note, the Chief Executive Officer is authorised to execute such documents as are necessary to give effect to this resolution. Thank you, Councillor. Summaries, can I have a Councillor second that motion? 
Councillor Spinks, Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Only that a lot of um, that expense has been covered by externals. We've got Lamana Corporation contributing over 100,000 and the Regions AgriLink Upgrade Program are contributing five and a half, oh, 550,000. So our cost is around about 100,000 or maybe even less than that, which is a pretty good deal, I think. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, only to agree, this is a good team effort between um, two parties and I'm uh, happy to support it. Councillor Spinks, are there any councillors against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? All right, we will go to the vote. All those in favour? Carried, unopposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 13.3 on page 132 and 133 of the agenda, which is award of contract CN2229, facilities maintenance service panel of support recommendation. Can I please have the council put that forward as a motion? There is an amended um, recommendation, I understand, uh, been placed before us, and I'll move that that the recommend that recommendation. Uh, I'll move that recommendation. Uh, it's in three parts. Well, the first part is uh, nominating the um, the panel, and the other two uh, regarding uh, number two. Note that the contract term is for a period of three years, with two one-year extension uh, options at council's discretion. Estimated contract value over the five years is seven million three hundred and twenty five thousand, excluding GST, and of course we authorise the Chief Executive Officer to execute the contract documents and approve any one year contract extensions as deemed appropriate. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? Mm -hmm. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak? Uh, no, again, um, I, I uh, it's great to yeah, one thing I'd just like to say, uh, Mayor, is that uh, I recognise most of these contractors as locals, and uh, that gives me some heart. Very good point. Councillor Abdullah, would you like to speak to the motion? Five minutes. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Are there any councillors against the motion? No. Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Brophy. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sali. Um, I've not updated with what the change has been in the recommendation, I'm sorry, but uh, if, if it reads as, as is Contract there. Number. Uh, I'll, I'll get uh, our CEO, Peter Harris, to just provide clarification on that for you, bro. I'm a that, That's fine. So, Councillor Brophy, it's, it's simply the inclusion of the contract number in the recommendation, CN2229. Terrific. Thank, thank you very much. Can I just say in regards to this recommendation, it uh, doesn't appear to be one of the more sexier of the agenda <laughs> items today for Council. Um, however, uh, it, it, is that super, way. It, it is super important. Um, and it's important to have a stable of tradies uh, and organisations that can be called upon to maintain our wonderful facilities. Uh, so vitally important uh, to award contracts to local companies, to local families and our community. These include suppliers uh, of uh, building, plumbing, electrical, guttering, refrigeration, uh, pest control, digging and many more. It's a, th a, a three year contract and that provides surety uh, to us and to the suppliers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? No, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 13.4 on page 137 of the agenda, which is contract 1987 panel of supplies for provision of landfill waste, recyclables and organic transfer, transfer and disposable services. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor Spinks. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I'd like to move that the council uh, one accept the tenders submitted for contract 19 uh, 1987 panel of suppliers for provision of landfill waste recyclables and organics transfer and disposal services by Imix Integrated Metal Management, Foot Waste Solutions, Cleanaway Industrial Solutions, and Veolia Environmental Services. Two, authorise the Chief Executive Officer to sign and seal the contract documents. And three, authorise the Chief Executive Officer to award the optional contract extension periods. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, just briefly uh, to read off the executive sum summary. Um, this tender is to establish a panel of contractors to meet operational needs for the processing and handling of waste materials uh, at the three resource recovery centres in Shepparton, and Ardmona and Murchison. The purpose of this contract is to establish a schedule of rates from a panel of contractors for various waste items to be processed at the resource recovery centres. The total value of services over the term of contract is estimated at 3.1 million. 
the initial contract term is three years from appointment with the option of two plus one year extension at council's discretion. Uh, this was went through our normal tender process and this is the resulting uh, oh, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, just to uh, air an observation, our procurement criteria, our evaluation criteria, we've got price at 60% and then four other um, criteria that are only at 10%. So it's clear that price would overshadow everything, which is a little bit disappointing considering local benefit to the region could be marked higher, but um, we have a procurement policy that uh, guides these things and I hope that comes up for review soon. It's more to life than price. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? No. Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? No. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 13.5 on page 142 of the agenda, which is Sport 2050 Strategic Plan Adoption. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor Brophy. Uh, thank you, Mayor O'Sally. Um, oh, recommendation. Hello, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it back. I thought you were a bit of an Irish issue, yeah, O'Sally. Um, the <laughs> recommendation on, that the Council, uh, one, note that the, the Sport 2050 Strategic Plan Review and Update, two, note the consultation undertaken between May and June 2021 and the consultation findings outlined within the Sport 2050 Strategic Plan, and three, adopt the final Sport 2050 Strategic Plan as attached. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Would it, can I please have a councillor second that motion? Councillor Spinks. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor O'Sally. Uh, why, why this plan? Um, the, sorry, um, the, the draft attracted some 130 submissions. So that was very well done and very well received. Why for a sport mad region have we a strategic plan? Well, it provides council, particularly with a, a, a real blueprint of what is required now and into the future regarding council managing recreation reserves and sporting facilities and highlighting development opportunities. For many, sport can be just seen as a pastime or games, if you like. Uh, it is more than that. It forms part of our, our psyche, our DNA here in Greater Shepparton. It provides health, physical and mental. It provides well-being, accomplishment, etiquette, teamwork, social interaction and community. This strategic plan not only outlines uh, opportunities, but also the gaps. With a corporate mentality these days of user pay, it is refreshing to see that the importance of the support participation and instead of user pay becomes community supports. A plan is just that, a blueprint, but now it needs to be backed up with some action. But uh, well done on um, the, the plan coming forward. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Mayor Sali. <laughs> um, while sports are not without floor, and while they are not everyone's idea of a good time, they are inarguably a cornerstone of living in the country. And I know now that Council is integral to this experience in providing infrastructure and grants and supporting clubs' participation and competitions. But what I've also learnt is that Council is on a spinning wheel to keep up. I recently was completely gobsmacked to find out that a local netball team has to go to the bathroom behind a tree. Their facilities simply don't have any female change rooms. And this is the reality for so many facilities where women's sport straight up didn't exist when they were built. Sport has progressed, but infrastructure has not. As well, it feels like all of our sporting facilities are needing to be renewed at the same time. We are regularly being approached to design and redevelop club rooms and courts and facilities and all are increasingly expensive and detailed, which is simply the way of things as sport becomes more complex and assets hit in age. Further, our communities and the number of sports they play are expanding, and all sports are on a journey of better recognising the diversity of participants that enjoy them. And all of this means sport is both challenging and essential, and we need to have a plan, which leads to the review and update of the 2050 sports strategy. From the report, the strategy will address and guide a future vision and development opportunities for sports facilities in Greater Shepparton, which considers the aspirations of clubs, groups and state sporting associations, the current and future needs of sports facilities, current and future trends in formal and informal sport, and provide a holistic needs-based approach to sports infrastructure planning. 
I'd like to thank everyone who participated in the consultation, and I note that there is lots of good data collected with some strong insights mentioned. Better resourcing for the Parks and Rec team for providing support to clubs and the need to upgrade change and bathroom facilities for all gender participation were clear priorities. Also, as an aside, I see that it is noted that squash has a tentative future due to facility provision issues, and in the strategy it's noted that there is planning for inclusion in the sports stadium. However, that has since changed, and I would hope we are following up to create a new plan to support them. Back to the point. All in all, this is a very dense but all-encompassing strategy, and I hope Council will use it heavily and heartily to make sure sports continue to be a positive cornerstone of our municipality. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sphinx. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Uh, are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? I might just add some comments, seeing there are place for. Uh, but I think it's been. <laughs> might be playing this week. Uh, no, look, well done, Councillor Brophy. You summed it up very well, and Councillor Spinks added a, a heap of detail to it as well, which I don't need to add too much more, but obviously outline the importance of sport in our community, the social connection that it provides to so many across our community. We knew how hard it was during the COVID aspect when sport wasn't there. You lose connection with people. You, you, you lose that sense of belonging because sport clubs do provide that sense of belonging and, and a home in some circumstances to people as well. It's a very dense document. Obviously, it makes sense. It's for a long-term strategic and, and plan. Um, I'm playing sport at the moment and things are changing, which has been highlighted as well. And what this plan does is ensure that next generation, so I've got young kids as well, when they're coming through, that we provide um, existing opportunities for them to enjoy the the, the luxuries that I've had of uh, playing sport in our community. So uh, well done to the team for putting this together. As I said, it's very dense. Um, so good stuff and we'll see where this takes us. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried, unopposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 13.6, which is on page 148, and that is terms of reference for the Shepparton Aerodrome Advisory Committee. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Thank you, Mayor Sali. Um, that the council adopt the review uh, Shepparton Aerodrome Advisory Committee terms of reference as attached. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Can I please have someone second that motion? Councillor Spinks. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor Sali. This is a renewal of the existing terms of reference, now five years old. Um, in in recent, uh, recent times, I've spoken with a number of stakeholders of the aerodrome um, over the past few months, and I must say that there are, there are many complex issues arising. So. Now more than ever, we, we need to be to have all of these stakeholders a bit of unity, uh, collaboration, and a firm understanding of the aerodrome's future capacities. Um, design, expectation, fiscal analysis, and better strategic planning uh, going forward. I see the this advisory committee uh, as a key plank in securing what is required here. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? very briefly to say that all of the changes that have come about um, through the review have all been uh, accepted by the committee. So that really is what it's all about. If they're happy with it, then I'm happy with it. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Uh, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. Councillors, we now go to page 151 of the agenda, which is item 13.7, adoption of council asset plan. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor please put that forward as a motion? Thank you, Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move that the council adopt the asset plan as attached to this agenda. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? Councillor Sphinx. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Oh, it just shows good management, um, housekeeping. We're, over 10 years, we've got a huge amount of spend, which is what we keep coming back to in responsible spending. It's $615 million of asset expenditure. I hope we can keep up with um, renewals. We keep having this lofty goal of trying to fund renewals by 100% and just fall short a lot. But, uh, it's a really great goal. So I'm happy with all of this. It's outside um, my professional scope. So... Um, yeah, I'll trust the team on this and it ensures that we're managing our finances responsibly. 
Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, just briefly, um, I think that, you know, everybody's heard the old trope, um, Rose Rates Rubbish, but I think this is a really interesting uh, plan and report to read that really shows the almost ridiculous amount of assets that Council is in charge of, um, and they all need uh, new ones, expanding, renewing, and they all hit an age, um, and to keep on top of that is an impressive feat, and this Council does it very well, so I support this plan. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? No, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried out. Opposed? Councillors, we now go to agenda item 13.8, which is on page 155 of the agenda and its developments abutting the aerodrome and planning implications. This is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor. I'm happy to move uh, the recommendation as printed on page 155 of the agenda. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Can I have a Councillor second that motion? Councillor Dobson? Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. It's um, a recommendation that's come to us because we need to have, well, we've been asked to have a position by the 27th of June for a VCAT hearing. And uh, it's of my opinion, the council has been too loose with approving developments around that aerodrome site in the past. So the risk of a catastrophic event is obviously high. If we don't draw a line in the sand somewhere, and there'll always be winners and losers where we draw that line. Or the alternative is to trigger a very expensive relocation that will cost ratepayers a pretty penny. So do we move the aerodrome for the handful of individuals who use it? Or do we allow council to initiate planning controls to apply acceptable buffers for noise and um, location restraints for people living nearby? So having said that, I do understand that there, it, it's a little messy and uh, we have had phone calls. So if, there, if anyone's comfortable, I'm more than comfortable laying this matter on the table if any councillor is inclined to do so. Otherwise, I'm also comfortable in supporting what's being presented. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, there are two main issues here that I see. One is um, uh, uh, in the event of an accident, uh, it, there's significant damage to property or loss of life in the event of an aircraft incident. And uh, <clears throat> those of us who can remember back, that happened in Essendon many years ago and, uh, and had to take action. And the noise impacts, I thought that was a, a very interesting um, a uh, very interesting exercise that, uh, about the the noise barrier around the. I never given that some thought how it, it winds its way around. So two very practical reasons uh, why I don't think this should go ahead. One is the safety aspect; that's the most important. The second thing is the noise pollution or the noise uh, overarching. You can imagine if we let aeroplane uh, let houses um, uh, be built in that sort of area the interface between there and aircraft coming and going, uh, you wouldn't know where the uh, where the objections would finish up. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against this motion? Any councillors that would like to speak for this motion? Before we go to vote, I might just have some closing comments which echoed through Councillor Summer and Councillor Dobson, that I think we can get a little bit better at this process in ensuring that it comes to us, uh, which it's typically did within a timely matter, but to, to make sure that there, it's quite complex, there's three parts to it. We need a formal position, absolutely. There's multiple development fronts around it. Um, some have been sort of self-inflicted by those developers, others not so much. We need a formal position. We have to protect one of our biggest assets. Any time we make a change that comes to us after a report, it does generally impact someone, whether it's positive or negatively. And unfortunately, in some circumstances, this is going to impact a small portion of a development. But there is processes that you can take to, to try and resolve those uh, situations. But at this point, uh, I'm reasonably comfortable with where we're at and the conversations that our exec staff have had with those necessary. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Councils, we now go to page 161 of the agenda, which is item 14, confidential management reports and 14.1, designation of confidentiality of information. There is no action required. It is detailed on page 161. 
Councillors, we now go to page 162 of the agenda, which is item 15, documents for signing and sealing, nil received. Councillors, we now go to page 163 of the agenda, which is 16 councillors' reports, 16.1 councillor activities and 16.1.1 councillor activities, May 2022. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. I'll move that the council receive and note the summary of the councillors' community interactions and informal meetings of councillors. Well, can I please have someone second that motion? Councillor Spinks. Councillor Abdul, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yeah, just briefly. This is, uh, um, this is a regular agenda item for our meetings, and uh, this is for the community to know uh, all the interactions that, come, that the council uh, and the councillors are having with the community and also all the informal meetings of councillors. So the list of interactions and briefing program is here. And as we can see that the, and it's very heartening to see that, you know, this list of community interactions is now growing because there was a time in, in not so uh, distant sort of past that uh, nothing was happening. And uh, because of COVID, we didn't have any um, events or anything. So now we are seeing lots of, lots of activities and it's so um, interesting to see that how our uh, region is growing, how our community is growing because there are so many, um, events which are basically about opening of a restaurant or, or some other uh, facility. So all of this is very uh, positive and uh, well done to councillors for attending to all these um, community events and interacting with the community. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, just briefly, um, it, it's this is this list is such a wonderful um, example of how diverse our community is. Like there is stuff from all walks of life on this list. Um, a couple I really want to shout out to. Um, a big uh, thank you to Gote for the um, Ida Hobbit experience. That's always, always a wonderful one uh, to go along to and it's very important to me and, and a lot of members in my community. Um, the ABC Takeover, thank you to all of the young people that shared their stories. If you haven't had a chance to check them out yet, they're really incredible and um, you know, young people know what they're talking about, they know what they care about, and they have lots of experience under their belt already. Uh, and the only other thing I want to take a chance to say is, um, this list is really great, and uh, White Night is happening this weekend, and I can't wait to see that on the list as well. So very cool for all the tourists coming along, but really cool for all of the locals that get to go along and be a part of White Night. So get amongst it. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? All right, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 165. Uh, sorry, agenda item 16.2, council committee reports. And we have one there under 16.2.1, river reflections connecting facing communities, industries and ideas. And that's on page 165 of the agenda. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor Brophy. Thank you, Mayor Sali. The recommendation is that the council receive and note Councillor Dobson's report, River Reflections, Connecting Basin Communities, Industries and Ideas. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Can I please have someone second that motion? Councillor Spinks. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Absolutely would. Thank you, Mayor Sali. Uh, first on the report, I support Councillor Dobson's call to engage the demographer, uh, Simon kester Musha. Uh, as his, uh, his experience and foresight analysis will be most beneficial to us here at Greater Shepparton. Uh, so thank you for putting that one uh, forward, Councillor Dobson. This region has many challenges and none more so than from water security. It was one of the, the, the hot topics during the, the recent federal election and will continue uh, to, to be as overtones by the new federal government gives us cause for concern about the Murray-Darling Basin Plan and what intentions there may be there. Uh, but I am optimistic and um, having Councillor Dobson uh, in our corner, if you like, uh, advocating, negotiating, spruiking uh, our region is hugely, hugely appreciated. Um, and can I, I finish with a quote that, uh, as they say, decisions are made by those who turn up. So thank you, Councillor Dobson. Good point. Councillor Brophy, thank you. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? 
just to say um, I appreciate that you not only go to all of these things, but that you bring the information back to us to share your learnings. Thank you for all the work that you do in this space. Thank you, Councillor Sphinx. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Can I just say in summary, and thank and you, you read it all there, but uh, in summary, I, we went to a, a breakfast the other morning and I was able to put a public question to the new uh, member for Nichols, uh, Sam Birrell, uh, specifically about water security, specifically about the Northern Basin, and specifically about the uh, New South Wales uh, State Government and their inability to get their water delivery plans in order uh, because of uh, floodplain harvesting and also uh, mega dam construction. So he has told me in private that he's going to follow all that up and that uh, he and I'll have some more talks about it. But I know him pretty well and rest assured that I'll be putting that forward more forcefully. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Before we go to vote, I'll obviously uh, back up what's been said already and highlight the fact how important it is to have strong representation in this highly important issue and Bro, and Councillor Brophy took the words out of my mouth which highlighted the fact that you've got to turn up to have an impact. And if we stop turning up, we won't have an impact. So I commend you for making the trip to Mildura and backing the region. Um, more broadly, it's going to be a challenging time ahead us to see what happens in this water space, but we need strong advocacy. And I'm glad you're leading the charge, so well done. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Stay with me, we're nearly done. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 16.3, notice of motion, amendment and rescissions nil received. Agenda item 17, urgent business not included on the agenda, nil received. And agenda item 18, close of meeting, which I will do at 6.26 p.m. Well done. Well done. Wow.